Hello. Hello, Danielira. How are you? Hi, Kiro. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. Yeah, today we changed the uh, lights a little bit. It's going to be yeah. more diffused. Maybe people don't notice it, but um, it's a little bit easier on my eyes. Sometimes when the, the uh, lights are pointing directly to the painting, mm -hmm. we get a lot of light on the painting and people get better resolution on their image, on their stream. Yeah, but you get a lot of uh, mm -hmm. light in your eyes. Right, right, right. Because they're so close to me. I, I can kind I can catch the lights like off the corner of my eyes mm -hmm. and that always irritates my eyes just a little bit. So we're always in search of a perfect setup and I don't think we're ever gonna find it. <laughs> but um but it's yeah, so, fine, remember. so it's diffused. So maybe the video is probably gonna be um a little bit grainier. No, because, you know I see it. Yeah. And I don't see quite a difference yeah it's very subtle i honest. feel but you know the camera has to bump the uh the iso quite a bit to um to uh to manage the low light so because it is we are in low light right now yeah it's very diffused um yeah. but it's um i guess it's it's comfortable once my eyes kind of set into settle into the uh light it's a little bit comfortable i don't have to force them too much so i don't know i think it's always tough I think uh, finding a perfect way to do what we do um, is probably, that's probably one of the things that I don't know if people realize how difficult it is to do, to record painting. Yeah. And especially to record painting this, in this setup. Yeah. Um, you know, um, medium size, you know, small to medium sized painting alongside with a palette, fairly straightforward. We cannot mm. do straightforward. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. There's, there's no scenario where I can understand where to put a camera on top of me, behind me, in front of me. I don't know. Uh, and where you could get like this perfect, perfect um, uh, sort of perpendicular image yeah. that has enough space for me to also paint. Maybe if the painting is very small, maybe oh, yeah, an when 8 it's by 10. Small, it's easier. Yeah, when it's an 8 by 10, probably, you know, that size doesn't give us um, many many issues but you know people usually like that we go a little bit bigger um and bigger is just far more difficult we would need a very good um wide angle lens mm -hmm. and the wide angle lens for this sony camera i think i showed it to you yeah yeah it it's was like super expensive bucks. but i also think mm. that a wide uh lens would also catch your face like your um oh, we it could will probably make a lot it more maybe but it could probably lower it could probably be a little bit lower. But then it would kind so, of uh, distort the image. It has to distort, yeah. So, Wide-angle lenses, they, they'll always, always, yeah. always distort. So just no, to I fit everything in. I think we have a, a very good setup. I think if it's... If I say so much. I think it's good enough for everything that we try to do. So um, I'm always up for, um, for tips. I know Tommy. Tommy has like a really cool setup too. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of i think he suspends his camera from some rigging that he made up mm -hmm. in his workshop uh which is really really cool oh but he works flat then i don't know i don't know if they work at an angle or flat i do th i do think that if you're working at an angle um it's very difficult if you're working flat i think i've seen some uh chinese youtubers that are obviously phenomenal in terms of craft uh do watercolors mm -hmm. and it's perfectly square and because I can kind of tell it's flat because they do washes and they never drip. Mm -hmm. They never ever drip. Mm -hmm. They kind of like stay in place. If I did a watercolor here and I did like a really loaded wash, it would start dripping. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have seen how almost my the paint. The oil in your paint, yeah, yeah. The oil starts running down or my paint kind of starts um, uh, tumbling down sometimes. <laughs> uh, so yeah if it's perpendicular if it's like an easel type of situation or if it's at an angle i really don't know how to do it i i can't come up with a way that it's um perfect and perfect and the other thing is maybe we could find a perfect setup but it's not comfortable at all yeah so yeah, we have I to... oh i'm sorry go ahead no you go ahead no i was gonna say that i remember when we started the videos 2020 yeah, yeah. uh we did like we did a mistake mm -hmm. that was that we kind of set up everything with the camera and it was perfect. And then we were like, okay, you have to sit down now. 
Yeah. There was no place for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So or or we we used to be um we used to do this thing where I could barely move. Like the camera would be hitting my head. Yeah. And because we would be, do you remember that those first uh, days were um, in a stool, if I'm not mistaken, or in a chair, in one of those metal chairs? And um, I was painting on my portable easel. Yeah, in little, the middle um, of the living room, yeah, I remember. Yeah, the little shot box. Yeah. Oh, we did a couple of those in the middle. Right, yeah. right, right. But I remember that the thing is that we set up the camera, then you uh, sit down to paint. Yeah. And then your head was like, in the um, frame frame all the yeah. time so we were like no no problem we can edit but the problem was that it was there a lot of time because we didn't set up thinking that there was going to be a head there <laughs> that has yeah. to paint a bald ass head so i remember uh that i had to do like some zoom like zoom oh, in the right. image right 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 for right for quite a bit i'm gonna i'm gonna fumble my way through trying so, to grab no. paint now so yeah, I do remember. Yeah, that. the early days. Yeah, early good old days, days of OPL. Uh, I don't know if they were good. I think they were. Oh, okay, I they mean, were they fun, were, but they were what, difficult. But they would brought us here. Yeah, we so. didn't have um, polarizing filter either. Do you remember? Yeah. At the I beginning, do. so a lot of the paintings have like a uh, ton of glare. We didn't have a controlled lighting. No, lightning. no, no. We we painted for lighting? the longest lighting. Time. I'm sorry, lighting. I always say lightning. lightning. Lightning would be controlled. Lightning would be something zoos would do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, no. We always painted with uh, natural light. Yeah. So it was a mess. Yeah. It was a mess. Today would have been an absolute mess. Oh yeah. It, weather can't be worse than today. The, yeah. Today is like My mom was saying that eh, mi cholis decía mm -hmm. buenas Cholidin. tardes mis maestros. Mm -hmm. Un abrazo inmenso para este frío tan fuerte. Yeah. Sí, cholis. Está horroroso el frío, horroroso, horroroso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, choli bean. Yeah. Choli. <laughs> yeah, choli. Choli free hole. Uh, so, uh, is it okay if we say hi? Yeah, well, let me let me say because I started painting. But, oh, go um, ahead, go ahead. So, we're going to use one of the, the old drawings that we, um, that um, all the, one of the old drawings that were in the uh, pages that I used um, in the Menorca workshop. workshop. Yeah. So, we're going to use, I'm still going to use the paper. So, maybe if you buy the painting, there's probably going to be, I don't know if there's a drawing behind this one, probably. I don't know. It's a good drawing. I, I think can't, I saw something. Yeah, I can't promise if the, that there's a good drawing. But maybe if you buy it, you'll get like an extra little um, Easter egg there. Mm -hmm. You get a, a nice drawing. Um, well, not a nice drawing. You'll get a drawing uh, in the back of this uh, this paper this this particular page. So um, we're gonna use that. But you know, no 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 reason really to use this as, aside from the fact that I don't like to. Um, keep pages that I don't, you know, that I'm not going to do anything with. So I much rather paint on top of them. Um, so we're going to do that. And um, continuing uh, with yesterday's, um, yesterday's sort of uh, push that we were uh, trying to, to uh, visualize in our painting, we're going to see if we can emphasize shapes. If we're going to, you know, really, really emphasize um, shapes in a way that the distortion can be something that really interests us or, you know, in this case, interests me. It doesn't have to be what interests you, but I want to see if I can exaggerate a bunch of these shapes because I'm, I'm always kind of obsessed when you wear these um, yellow slash creamy jackets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love them. I really, oh, really like them. Oh, thank you. I'm going to so, use them more often then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, um, I want to see if I can just really, really push... The width of the jacket, I'm going to exaggerate it because there's, there's a, speaking of tumbling, the side of this jacket, the um, left side, which would have been your right, but the mm -hmm. left side of your jacket comes down like if there was a steps, like, like a staircase. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you could slinky down the, um, the left side of your jacket. Uh -huh. While on the right side, our right, what would have been your left, um, it's just a big kind of nice curve. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if I could make this feel um, as if it belonged to this, um, to the proportions of this substrate. And then, you know, I don't want to say that the uh, portrait or the head is going to be 
um, like second thought, but I want to say that um, that's not going to be the focus of, of our painting today. Mm -hmm. The head is just going to be that. It's just going to be what is on top of this really cool sort of abstracted pushed um, jacket. So I think it's going to be very cool. We're going to use our our um, regular palette. I could have, I, I thought for a second that I, uh, um, that I could have just put some bismuth yellow here just to get some of that cooler kind of creamy yellowness. Uh, but we're going to go, we're going to be okay with, um, with Without the, uh, it? yeah, with the ochre, I feel and a little bit of blue. I think that's, that's going to give us, um, enough of that coolness that I'm kind of looking for. And in reality, I'm just way more interested in, in what I can do with the uh, shape mm -hmm. than what I can do with color. I know that shape plus color can equal something that's super powerful, but, um, but I'm way more interested in the, um, uh, and the pushing of the shape, because I think yesterday we had that conversation going about how to, um, you know, how 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 can we reach that, you know, manner of working which seems super super personal, and um, you know, I'm gonna try to show today what I the sort of stuff that I would do mm -hmm. um, to feel like I'm answering to something that I'm that I like when I'm painting. And I was speaking yesterday about how to explore the limits of those things that move us. Yeah. So this is going to be a limit for me mm -hmm. because I know consciously that I'm doing a ton of things wrong. Okay. But I'm loving, I'm going to hopefully love, you know, exploring those things that I know are off. Um, so we're going we're gonna to see today if uh, working, you know, on those boundaries feels right and we're going to see if we can, you know, what lessons we can take away from from just pushing to directions that can be um, super fun. So sounds that's, super cool. Yeah, well, well sounds, always on paper. Always sounds no. cool. Yeah. Well, the painting <laughs> is sounds, on paper, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, always, always at the beginning, it always sounds cool when we try to set like the um, goals, like a work plan. Yeah, like a course for uh, for today's painting or for each day's painting um they always sound interesting i always feel but then it's about executing i always push myself to do that to say what i'm you know at the beginning to 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 kind of say okay this is where we're going to try to do today this is what we're going for mm -hmm. in order to push myself to try to go for it um if it's super vague in my mind i ha I, I think that yes i'm probably going to be able to do a painting but uh, i i you know, I run the risk of getting a little bit lost um, in the painting. Uh, so I much rather have a plan and try desperately to execute on it. And if I don't, then it's on me. Like that's totally, totally on me. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think I can deal with that a little bit better than just not really knowing what I want to, what Wh I want to do or avoiding that? or avoiding kind of saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. I like to say it out loud the same way we you know, at the uh, end of last week that I told you, no, we're going to do the tattoo. And you were like, oh, do you want to say it? And I was like, yeah, because yeah, if I say like it. Commitment. It's yeah. If like I say it in my mind, it. it's like I say it's going to happen. I said it. I yeah. said it out now loud. Now it has so, to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now it has. And, and the more people that hear it, the better. So, yeah. So, um, let's say hi. Yes. Uh, first one here was Cody, Ooh, Cody Winicky. Cody. Cody said, good afternoon. A rock, Cody. Hi, Cody. How are you? También desde muy temprano de la transmisión está Margo. ¿Cómo está? Eh, buena. Hola. Hola, Margo. Ya no importa. Hola, Margo. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás, Margo? Margo, y muchas gracias por la sugerencia sí, la... de Instagram. Yo no sabía que la casa de Sorolla... El tenía museo Instagram. de la casa de Soro ya tenía Instagram, entonces. Sí, una manera fantástica. Disfruté de hoy mi mañana viendo los posts. Muchas gracias por la sugerencia. Y también te sugirió, fue Margo quien te sugirió. No, 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 no. Ah, bueno. Fue Mario Dana. Mm, pensé que Margo era quien te había sugerido al escultor. No, 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 fue Mario japonés. Dana que me, me dijo que él, ese ese trabajo le acordaba el mío, entonces. Ah, muy me... chévere. Entonces, de una Super. vez, y Mario de pronto nos escucha... Oh, eh... but Mario, I think Mario speaks English. Oh. Because so. he said it in English. So, oh, okay. thank you to Mario Dana. Also for the suggestion. Yeah, who also suggested I liked a it very too, cool... So yeah. I'm saying it because I was like, Danny showed me and I was like, oh, I want <laughs> I want that. Who is that? 
Yeah. Yeah. He's a very cool uh, wood sculpture. Yep. Yep. So, uh, hello to Liad. Hi, Liad. Hey, How are you? Jose Fail said, today is a good day. I love that for Jose, you... You all, you almost always say Jose Fail said. Yeah, cause, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Said. Almost always, almost always. <laughs> like it could be Jose, and you'd be like Jose Fail said. Jose I like Fail that. It's said, like okay. But now I'm conscious about. No, it. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I know I killed it, but I, I had to point <laughs> it out because it's, it was there. So Jose Fail said. Uh huh. Today's a good day. Mm. I went out to get lunch, and yes. then remembered I have leftover pasta from dinner last night. Nice. So I got done donuts Ooh. instead and now come home to see the life started yes Ooh. so donuts plus pasta from plus yesterday OPL. plus well yeah us but you know <laughs> donuts plus pasta that's pretty cool so what what type of pasta and what type of donuts that's yeah. like the most important question no i'm not big on donuts i love donuts i think i ate you know all the donuts that i could eat. i love donuts i love the you don't I don't, eclair? I don't eclair. know. How, eclair. Yeah. I maybe, love it. Maybe Oulalan is. Oulalan uh, or is uh, Van Sant. Or Van Sant. You know, I've, I've told you the story that is always disgraceful for me. What? That I, you know, I, I practiced French for like months with these like Berlitz tapes, cassette okay. tapes. Oh, I had no idea. I'm dating myself. This is like pre war. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> pre war. And, and, yeah. And uh, which war, by the way, yeah. we're always on war. But um, yeah. I know, I know, I went dark. But I was super proud that I could speak some French when I was doing this this really big trip because the um, the city that I was going to spend the most time on now this I remember this super story. long trip was going to be Paris. So mm -hmm. Paris. So I was like, I need to speak some French, and um, so I took my. Um, it was the city where I started my trip, and then the city where I ended my trip. Where? Paris, Paris. Paris, yeah. yeah, no, I wanted to hear. I mean, ah, I knew oula, it was Paris. Uh, Paris, but I wanted to listen yeah. to your uh, Paris. Paris, Paris. Uh, so I was super, super proud that I could understand a few things and that I could speak a few things. And I didn't have a lot of money. Like the trip had cost a ton of money, but the good thing was that this was a trip that I had done right after a, um, a show that I did mm -hmm. super well. I sold out and um, and I used a lot of that money just to go on a trip. I didn't have much responsibilities back then. I was I was younger. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to spend, you know, 60 percent of the money, 70 percent of the money that I earned on a um, on a trip. No, I don't know what I'm dropping. I'm going to put it over here. Do you want me to check? No, no, no. It's okay. okay. Uh, so I I wasn't, you know, I was eating like in the street, whatever I could eat, honestly. Mm -hmm. I would just eat like a sandwich. Probably I, I tried every single sandwich in every single European um, city that I was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I was in Paris and, um, and I was like, I, I have like a weird sweet tooth because there's tons of things that I find way too sweet. Mm-hmm. And there's other things that are super sweet that I'm like, oh, yeah, I can eat that. Yeah. I'm super weird. There's, yeah, you have that. It's so strange because I'll sometimes say, oh, my God, no, chocolate or, oh, my God, no, like, for example. An ice cream? No. Are keep, no, are ice cream, I know ice cream is because of the milk. I just can't do milk. But um, but arequipe, I would, I'll go like, oh, my God, of course, that's way, way too sweet. And, um, and then I'll see a fudge brownie and I'm like all over it. So I don't know. I don't know. Or how... bocadillo. I mean. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know. Don't don't ask me how my body works. So, I I was like, oh my god, this this little cart, this little pastry cart in the street, and I was like, I am so getting an eclair, and I was like, eclair, like here in Colombia, eclair. We, we say eclair. Eclair. Like we yeah. use. It's like saying um, croissant. No, acá yo digo croissant. Right. Well, but we say croissant, which is closer to croissant, which is. I like said the, uh, croissant. Cro but we say croissant. Yeah, croissant. yeah. But what I'm what I'm going to what I'm croissant. going to what no, I'm, I'm getting <laughs> to uh -huh. is that it is close to the French word. Yeah. It is very very close to the French word. Uh, yeah, we, I mean it's not éclair. Like yeah, you can get eclair, it. You can get eclair. it. Like éclair. Right. Right. Un éclair. Un éclair. Right. So I was like. Okay, I know my French is not good enough, 
but come on, it's an éclair. I can order an éclair in in France. This is ridiculous. And I think the dude was just being mean. I really do. Because, I, come on, it's a pastry cart, and there's only one thing in there that sounds like éclair. I wasn't butchering it that much. I'm positive. And the guy was like, what? He was like looking at me like, what? You want what? And I was like, éclair, un éclair, s'il vous plaît, un, un éclair. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. I need my sweet. And uh, he was like, what, what? And I had to resort to like pointing at the damn thing. Felt like an idiot. And he was like, oh, oh. And I was like, what? Is, like, I couldn't have been that far off. It's not, <laughs> I wasn't saying donut. Yeah. You know? Um, it's not like, um, you know, milojas, you know what they call milojas in the U.S.? Uh, no, I have Napoleons. no idea. Napoleons. I know, Napoleons. I don't I know. I think it's probably the Napoleon Spanish uh, like that word dessert. is better. Because miloja, mil yeah. Ojas, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool it's name. Because it's because um, it's, it's like, like thin a filo paper. dough. It's yeah. like a hundred papers. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mil, oh, a thousand papers. Yeah. Mil hojas is a thousand papers. So. Yeah, but Napoleon, I don't even... Yeah, you know, maybe he just liked that dessert and they just <laughs> named a dessert after him. So, but um, yeah, a Napoleon would be our Miloja. Yeah, but what you're talking about with the e eclair? Eclair. E eclair. Eclair. Is it eclair? Maybe? Eclair? Well, the R in French never eclair? sounds different than R. Eclair? I think. Yeah, but not eclair, but eclair. Maybe. Oh, but one of, you know, the first yeah, no, one but is just like an embellishment. I yeah, would say, but. but but you can understand yeah, it. Yeah, but it's like this, like the story I told about uh, the neon bracelets, the ones that I was right, calling right. neon bracelets. Yeah. I yeah, mean, sometimes people you could, are idiots. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, come on. I mean, it's not like you need to call someone else to listen to what I'm saying and laugh about it. Because you know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. of course, if it's a party and I'm asking for the neon bracelets and everyone's having like the neon thingy, in their necks and arms and whatever. Yeah. What else am I going to be talking about? Like. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I was in a store in um, Budapest. Budapest. In Budapest. And um, a bookstore. And I was looking for books on Julia Bengsur. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, Julia Bengsur, Julia Bengsur. And come on. I don't care how, what you speak. Like, that sounds like something. You know, if I say, oh, I'm looking for books on Rembrandt. Like, you could be, okay, it's it's Rembrandt or Rembrandt. I don't even know. My Dutch is, is pretty, um, it's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if somebody says Rembrandt or Rembrandt or Rembrandt, you go like, okay, Oh, I know I what you're talking you. about, yeah. It's like, okay, I got you. Like, don't. You know, don't strain yourself. Like, I'll get the book. Don't worry. But I was the same thing. I was in a bookstore and I was like, oh, this painter, Julia Bengsur. And he was like, who? And I was like, Julia Bengsur, Julia Bengsur. And eventually he goes like, but this is after like two minutes of me struggling. And he goes like, oh, Julia Bengsur or something like that. Like he did like the tiniest little thing, <laughs> the tiniest. It was like nothing. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he was kind. He brought me the book. But I was like, dude, come on. I was close. <laughs> I was so close. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if anyone here speaks uh, Hungarian. And if you do, please tell me if my Julia Bengsur is so off. So off. Because even in Poland, my Polish was, you know, I could like say the, uh, the uh, Polish painters and they would get it eventually. It was pointing and Polish painters. That's all I had with me to go to um, to help myself um, go Buy through. A book. Yeah, and go through like three cities and three cities, three <laughs> cities in Poland mm -hmm. uh, in early two thousands. So, ah, uh, I don't know. But I do. I mean, if I give them the benefit of the doubt, it's yeah. like what Ivan was saying about the student that said. Oh, like the colors uh, that Anderson used. And it's <laughs> like, fun. what? Yeah, that one's... Anderson, that, that... and you're like, what? And it was Thorn. Yeah. I mean, but 
I wouldn't get there. And like maybe no ev- yeah, eventually, Anderson. but maybe I would be like two minutes struggling to know who Anderson is. Because Anderson, Anderson is a name too. So I right. would be like, Anderson? I don't know any Anderson. Well, I would have struggled because I, I would have thought, what what painter has Anderson as a last name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would have been like, why don't I know this painter? Yeah, like, I and should when know. did I mention the I Anderson? Know an Anderson painter. Yeah. Um, so just who's, to who's give Anderson? them the the Anderson. benefit of the doubt, maybe they were like no I out don't of think place so. when no, you said no, that. I don't, I don't know so. if out of place is an expression, but out of place, yeah. When something is out of place, it's uh, like no, like they like were, something that shouldn't be there. They were caught out of guard. That's um, off guard. Off guard. <laughs> off guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always try to make it better and No, no, no. I love your spins um, on your spin on on my Colombian on habits. Things. Um I do the same thing. I mess up my expressions all the time. Because they're not really my expressions. Yeah. I think I messed them up in Spanish too. So who like who cares? Cody Winicky said, "I've always been pretty impressed with your camera angle. When I have tried to record paintings, the camera is always blocking my face, so I have to paint around it." Yeah. That one's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We tried. I think I did a couple of or Instagram. No. In Instagram. Yeah, in Instagram you had the phone. Yeah, but the phone was It was, was like the paper, me. the phone and you. Right. All the Instagram lives. People didn't realize this. Every every Instagram live. This is like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> this is what like uh what was this? Like 20 This was 17, probably, 2018. Yeah, 5 years ago maybe. Yeah. So we had sketchbook, camera, and Nicolas. me kind of peeking, struggling, yeah, struggling to see past the uh, the the <laughs> phone. Um, it was a mess, but I, you know, it was a it, origins, <laughs> OPL origins. I just so. remember something. I don't know why, but I had a flashback. Yeah, of something that was uh, super embarrassing but funny. What happened? No, I'm I'm, I'm okay. I mean, it's you not. Were, it, it can't be so embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's mine because I like, don't remember it. I was the one that was embarrassed. So okay, wait, go go. Uh, you recorded a video. I don't know what you were showing, like a book or something. Oh, and I was you singing, singing Shakira, but I was like singing in a funny way. Yeah, that was in my mother's house. Yeah, so I was yeah. like exaggerating a lot because I was just like trying to annoy you. <laughs> Sure. As and you, you uploaded the video with <laughs> I thought I had <laughs> put I thought I had put the audio off. Nicolas, yeah. No, 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 I didn't do it. I, if I did it on purpose, no, I would have told no, you. No, I, I remember ago. you were like, uh, oh, I just published the video and I opened it and I was like, I'm there singing, Nicolas. And we had a good well, laugh. Singing and, singing is uh yeah, you know, you're being a generous. Stretch. There. Yeah, I'm stretching it. But yeah, I just remember that. It was pretty funny. Um, so Jose Fail said, today is less great day now. My leftover chicken fettuccine Alfredo will mm. have to be eaten cold because the microwave has stopped working. What? Donuts are chocolate, strawberry, and blueberry uh, glaze. No sprinkle. Chocolate? I would... So you, had three, you have three donuts or, yeah. or is that one I think, glazing? I think uh, they're different. Yeah. Chocolate, strawberry, and uh, blueberry. Mm-hmm. And uh, why don't you heat your uh, pasta in the stove? Because you could do it. If you pour a little bit of water or if you mm-hmm. do baño de maria. Yeah. Because I've done that. Yeah. Not it's quite. not that though. bad. Yeah. I mean, you could. Yeah. Um, Kakeiro. Dice hello, peeps. Ooh. Hello, Kakero. How are ya? Kakero Rodriguez. Rosaline said Ooh. hello, everyone. Hi, Half Rosaline. Of the rose. Half 50, of the rose. 50 rose cent. Ooh, terrible. I don't know what I'm trying. Yeah, I, it's like a 50%, but 50 rose cent. Um, I don't know. No, no, it's not, not that bad. Super bad. I thought you were going with 50 cent. Okay, like, that would have been like, yeah, sure. I don't know why I would bring him up, but <laughs> yeah. Alejandro Morales. I mean, aside dice, from knowing that Rosalind, um, who's who's here now, Robin Rosalind. or Rosalind? Rosalind. Aside from knowing, aside from knowing that Rosalind was shot seven times, it's true. Nicolas. It's true. Bad jokes. 
No, well, that's the only pull out that I can come up with with uh, 50 Cent. Fitty, Fitty. You know what was funny? When yeah. he How was. How many times uh, it was shot? Because that's the only thing I, I remember. I have no idea, Nicolas. That's the only thing I remember knowing about him when he came out. No. It's like, I, oh, that dude was shot seven times or something like that. He was shot like a lot of times. Like, it's a miracle that he's alive, I think. Well, I mean, I Googled how many times 50 cent and the first thing was got shot. Was shot. Yeah. Mm, nine. Nine. No, that's nine. Terrible. That's a miracle. That's, you know, if that happens to you, you change your life. I remember there was a funny uh, meme. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't funny. No. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay. It had to. I don't know it, so. No, like um, when he was in the Super Bowl. Oh, the upside down. And he was upside down. Yeah, and yeah. there was a meme about uh, fifty cents in the floor, like the video of him like dropping coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was terrible. It was, yeah. No, no, no. It was funny. <laughs> Yeah. That's how I was feeling with the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the blood was going to my head. Yeah. And the worst part is that you were being like pushed in your face too. Yeah. So yeah it wasn't yeah. like. She, she was amazing. And I know that it was uncomfortable for uh, Lorena to do the tattoo. Because she, I could tell, all I could feel was her whole body on top of me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I was like, oh, if she feels like she has, to, she's a super like, um, carefree person so and i've known her for many 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 years yeah so i we, we are you know we're okay so when you know when i saw that she had to like shove her body on top of my like head <laughs> yeah. just to tattoo i was like okay this is probably like super uncomfortable yeah. for her and she's like, like uncomfortable super... in, a, in a physical way like yeah like afterwards like because she did the uh, dragon first mm -hmm. like samu's dragon first and she was exhausted. She was like, my back is killing me. Like, the position is like Because she wasn't even like sitting all the time. I saw her and she had oh, to... Oh, no, she had to like stand Like up. kind of squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It was, yeah, I can't imagine because I wasn't even looking. But I can't imagine yeah. like, the, the position she had to um, tattoo. And then the second one, it was just her like suffocating me. It yeah, was just she was like, like literally strangling me. Yeah, and she was like, I have to put another music and we have to get done with this. Like yeah, she was like faster. Yeah. So uh, she put some. Um, it's always music. some punk rock. Yeah. She's she's always into like classic punk, and um, and then you got this the tattoo. This was like a faster and... punk, and then she was feeling it. Yeah. She was feel like at the beginning with the dragon, she was like, and she she would stop. So you know it hurts, 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 hurts. You stop, take like a two second breather, then. Two well, you're breather, doing a super long line. Two second breather. I was seeing her and she had to do it like super slow. I mean, like the d would be like one centimeter. Yeah, I know. That's like crazy. No, that's amazing. And she's doing that so that it doesn't hurt, you know, for line quality, but also so that it doesn't hurt so much for me. In in Fers, she was like... No, nah, I mean, now you're exaggerating, Dude, but I, yeah. I felt I felt she was doing like a straight line, like a highway. <laughs> I felt no. she was painting a And at the end, highway. I mean, she raised uh, the machine and it was like a five centimeters line. Thing is yeah, that you were are, also exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But yeah, but then there, the funny thing there was like, I was, I couldn't breathe when she was like squeezing my neck. And oh, yeah, then, because yeah, you had to like stretch to, the like, skin stretch, and like. But then press. Yeah, and then press. To have it like tight. I know, so, and we're talking like as if I'm like a bulldog. Like she has to stretch so much skin. Um, no, I mean I think the neck is terrible for uh, everyone. Yeah, I, I mean it's not like your neck is terrible to uh, tattoo. I know. I think in general, because I remember uh, her friend uh, came in. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, I remember how I hate uh, <laughs> doing neck tattoos." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's like a, a pretty like standard thing that maybe tattoo artists don't really it's just a, enjoy that you, much because it's kind of it's uncomfortable. A, it's an uncomfortable place. Yeah. So um, 
Alejandro Morales decía, mm. hola mi gente, hello everyone. Hola Alejandro, hola, Alejandro ¿cómo estás? Um, Javi Hav said, hello everyone, cold and rainy in Chicago as well. Oof. Yeah, here too. So I think so it's a universally terrible weather. horrible day. Uh, es Esther... Dice, hola, buenas tardes, chicos. Hola, Esther. Aprendo mucho sobre pintura con vosotros y me encanta oíros. Felicidades por vuestro trabajo a los dos. Ay, muchas, muchas gracias, gracias Esther. Esther. Y eh, muy felices de que esté Esther acá. De que esté Esther, Esther. De que esté Esther acá. Uh -huh. Y esperamos ver... Eh, esperamos. Esperamos ver pronto a Esther no. en Esther Canal. En Esther. Esther Díaz. Uh, Aline Gollard said, yeah. Danny, did you still have your nose ring? It sits so good on you. I'm thinking about getting one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have it. I mean, the camera doesn't pick it up that much, but trust me, there it is. And a funny thing about it, um, do you know I've never changed the ring I have? Uh, like I, the, I can smell it, yeah. No, I, I'm you know kidding. I'm, I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah, you know I'm like super careful with it. I'm kidding. But I I've, like it. I I've like never it. changed it. And I have it 10, 10, maybe 10 years ago, like nine years ago. Yeah. So. I think I, well. I, when you met me, I had my piercing. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always, always seen you like, like that is part of you. Yeah. But the funny thing was that you took it off the other night. Yeah. And you went and l you looked at me like, what is different? And I was like two centimeters away. And I was like. What's different in The me? thing is, I was and already in like, bed. I your was in bed. socks? And I was like, my was socks, Nicolás. The thing is, I was in bed already. <laughs> I was in bed and you just stormed out of the bathroom and you <laughs> looked at me like a little crazy eyes and you were like, okay, you know, it's game time. Yeah. Game time. But I was like, I'm what? gonna... What? Like... And you were like, you have 10 seconds. What is different? Because I thought you were going to be like... No, but you can't I tell... Mean, I was you know, there like 10 that. minutes. <laughs> you can't tell your partner that. Because I think every partner would shit themselves. Would be like, oh my God, no, this is a I test. No, but I mean, it's not like if you lose this something bad happens. This is a test I was about how laughing. much I know this person. No, it was and just I funny. Was just, I was scanning you, you know, and, and I couldn't come up with anything. I was like, But I the don't funny know. thing is that you I said I your socks. I just started saying things. I your just started socks, saying, and like, I was like, your hair I mean, looks amazing. <laughs> your eyelashes are incredible. <laughs> no. Like, you are so, so beautiful. Yeah, no. Yeah, I got nervous. I was like, I'm failing this test. So I'm just. No, but at the end, I, I know was, I'm failing. I'm going to push some compliments. At the end, I was like, it's my uh, nose ring. And I, you were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean. I didn't realize that it, was, but yeah. By then, it was super obvious. N the thing is that it's also super. I was super happy that you weren't mad. That I wasn't mad? Well, because Why would I be? Because it was very obvious. I should nah. have gotten that one. It was a gimme. No, but I mean, I thought it was funny. Because I, I took it out because I was trying to clean it. I always uh, clean it. Yeah. And I saw oh, that I fuck. have like... A, what? Sorry. No, I just... Dropped some it? Paint. Yeah, no, no. I put some paint on my clothes. Mm. And it's always fucking... I'm sorry, but it's always cad red. Always cad red. It can't be lie. anything else. It's got to be cad red. Nice. Anyways. Can I help you with something? No, just burning the clothes afterwards. No. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, I thought it was funny because I... Like, I feel that I'm not that different without it. But I like it. No. Oh, of course you're not. I mean, it's just like a... T it's a little thing. Because it's a thing. super subtle piercing. I yeah, mean, it's not it's a like a thing, big but... thing. Yeah. But yeah, but it's not as if you take it out and, and my brain was like, what is going on? Who is this person? Yeah. Mm, yeah. But mm, yeah, I got it when I was, I think it was my first year in the university. Preschool? Oh. No. I don't know. Yeah. I remember I had like a finals. Yeah. And I was going to go back home with my sister yeah because she was still studying there and i told her like hey can you uh come with me so i can get a piercing and she was like you haven't told my mom and i was like uh i mean i have the age <laughs> so i don't have to i think i don't have to tell my mom i mean i can tell her mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. and she my mom was like oh that's horrible i don't like it 
But I mean, but, that was it. So. Well, that's my mom's reaction to every single time I've gotten anything tattooed. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Although she was nicer this time. Well, she said I was kind of crazy at the beginning. And then she said, if you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. At the end, that's, I mean, the people that, like, it, like if you're getting it, it yeah. only matters if you liked it or not. Of course, yeah. And if you're going to get one, Aline, I don't think it hurts. Um, it didn't hurt me. But um, it was funny because I started crying only in that eye. <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's like something like a nerve or something. A nerve? I, I have no idea. No, I'm just saying words. But <laughs> like something happens. Yeah. And you have the like the reaction of it. It's like all the uh, liquids on that part of your face right. start okay. like dripping. Okay, that's so that my sentence, eye was crying. That sentence was weird. But it was weird because it was only my right eye. Mm, and my nose was crying too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No, I could understand you getting like uh like uh, like a snotty nose, like snot coming No, out but of I was nose. like crying. Cuz it gets like irritated. Cuz it wasn't like one teardrop. It was like mm. going and going and well, going. Well, you know it's the same it's the same con con conducts? No. Conduits? Well, conductos. in Spanish it's conductos, yeah, so Oh god. Is it conduct? I don't even know. I mean, I know conduct is like conducta, but um. I mean, whatever. <laughs> no, no, I need to know. I'll I'll check that later. How you do don't I have look to. That? No. Um, con, como, So I could do it. No, yeah. Conducto Let's lagrimal. Do. Oh, God. You went like full. English. Well, that's the name. Tear duct. Ducts. Duct. Okay. Duct. Duct. So it's not quite conduct. But duct. Maybe conduct is an, is an, um, a shortened version of duct. Maybe duct is a certain version of conduct. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, it's like the saying. same duct. Okay. So, maybe. So yeah. that's why I was crying. But yeah, it it wasn't uh, hurtful. And I remember they told me like, at first you have to have like a tiny, like the ones that are not a ring, but a like a ball. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, but I, I mean, is it possible that I can have a ring? And he was like, well, I mean, I have one that's hypohallergenic. Mm -hmm. uh, we could try it. And I was like, yeah. And I still have it. So. Yeah. Happy nothing went uh, wrong. No, no. Your, you know, nose is still there. Mm, Aline Gollard said, I have one in my underlip that was, that has never changed also. Haha. <laughs> It's strange if I don't have it in my mouth. Yeah. Ow. No, and I have a, like a... Did you pinch yourself or something? No, or I remembered just something. I've told you about this, but I went to change my passport, like mm -hmm. to renew my passport. And I went there. You have to have... But were you in pain it? for like a second there? Or were you just reminded of something? No, I was reminded. <laughs> oh, because you were like, something. ow. No, I was like, ah. Okay. Like, mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. And... Uh, you have to like ask for an appointment, then you have to go there. So it's not like I could miss the appointment and easily go back. Yeah. Uh, so I was there and they were like, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, we have to take a picture of you. Can you take out your uh, nose ring? And at that time, mm -hmm. it was tighter, like yeah. it was closed and it had like a tiny ball at the end. And I've never uh had it out of my nose so i was like oh yeah give me a minute i'm gonna go to the bathroom he was like yeah no worries i went to the bathroom and i was like trying to get it out and i couldn't so i was like trying and trying and trying and i remember <laughs> there was a girl that was in the bathroom and she was super nice she was like are you okay like do you need help 
<laughs> and I was like, no, I'm, I'm just struggling because I have to take my piercing out of my nose to take a picture. And she was like, oh, do you want me to help? And I was like, no, no, don't, no, don't worry. don't touch my face. She was like, wait, I have the solution. Oh, that's where the weight and comes she, from? <laughs> she opened her purse. Oh, Jesus. And she had some uh, pinzas. What? Yeah, this is disgusting. But they yes. were new. No, they were new. Yeah, right. That's what you're telling yourself. Well, they were like in a case. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like you let like stranger with tweezers take no. that off of your. Oh, my no. God. And I was like, oh, no, don't worry. And she was like, no, they're new. And I was like, OK. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she was like Who helping me. And she took the little bowl out. Oh, she and might she as well like, just said, could I like bite it off? <laughs> you know, would you mind? No, like, I'm I mean, just gonna she bite was being super just nice. A little bit. I'm going to do it with my teeth. I no. know it's, you know, it's going to feel okay. I brushed my teeth. Don't worry. No, she was teeth. being super nice. Of course she was like the freak. And I was like, oh, thank you. And she was like, no, no worries. You can have uh, the tweezers. No. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh thank you. Oh. And that was like the best thing. Oh, uh, the uh, tweezers? She said, no, because um, I thought you could take the like the little bowl out and you could take it out but like the whole like the like the space in the earring yeah earring not piercing yeah was super small so i had to open it more but at this oh, moment i used the tweezers to, yeah to but open wait it up? like if they uh, were like oh know, my god where were those tweezers nah, oh, no because i didn't do that i mean <gasps> these are the tweezers mm. and where you grab them <gasps> with the hand I had, hi, Nicola. I don't know. I just didn't. I know had this. to do like a terrible thing. So I had to put the place where you oh, open them. Now you have to here, do a terrible thing. And then thing. like start moving oh, it until oh, Jesus the, Christ. Oh. like the space opened. You, you don't a bit know more. what sort of hair she was pulling out Nicola, with those tweezers. Nicola, no, they were new. Like I saw mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I saw them. Yeah, sure. They were new. I mean, what did, they all look new. No. They're either, they either look new or like. No, because she oxidant, took a tape like, out of like. I mean, you don't, if you have them in your purse, you don't have them like in a tiny box with a tape you have to take off to I, open them. You're that sort of person. You would. No. I think you're the person that would do that. No. I well, think so. I'm the type of person that would uh, use alcohol every time I use my tweezers. So I know. They would be like squeaky clean. But at the end, uh -huh. I could uh, take my piercing off mm. after like half an hour. And I went back mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm here. And he was like, ready. Oh, what happened? <laughs> and I don't know if you've seen it. Ho like the best thing uh, for me was that the picture is black and white because my nose was A little bit like of irritation? Crazy maybe? red. <laughs> and it was like normal here, but it, ha it had like a bump yeah. in that side. Mm. So, yeah. That's my story. I'm going to say that it wasn't today. the uh, the half an hour of trying to get it out. I'm going to say it was the infection no. from the uh, stranger's tweezers. No, they were new. Mm -hmm. Keep telling yourself that. I mean, that. if it wasn't for that, I would have missed my appointment. And I had to renew it because I was going to travel. So I was like, I had to do it like now or never. Yeah, I'm going to so. risk... I'm going to risk uh, hepatitis for this. Okay, no. Yeah. No. Uh, Lotus Pod said, it's really not that disgusting, Nicolas. LOL. Oh, it isn't. Right. I mean, no, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, here, I have my pubic tweezers. No. You can use these. I'm sure. Yeah. Total stranger, no. like a dude, like a guy in the street. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to pull this out. No, Imagine, that, like, that's... change the whole scenario. No, don't say no, that. No, no, no. But let's change the whole scenario no, because there's I... nothing different here. Imagine you're trying to take your piercing in the street or like in the bus. You're in the bus and you're like, oh, I have to take this off. It's like itching, whatever. But why would you have to do it that urgently? It doesn't matter. But then a stranger comes to you, a stranger, genderless. It doesn't matter, you know. He, she, they, doesn't matter. And, you know, they go like, hey, I have a pair of tweezers. You know, I, I can help you pull that off. So the stranger, let's say this dude, just pulls out this pair of tweezers and you're like, oh, those seem, they seem clean in the bus. They seem bus clean. And you use them. And he's like, oh, don't worry. Keep them. Keep them. Oh, my God. No. Stop it at the ER for some antibiotics no. after that. Yeah. No, because I saw her like Christ. open them. 
Mm-hmm. No, like yeah, I sure. swear, I've told you about this story before. No, no, no you not had this no part. idea. No, not this part. I think I've told you, but maybe you weren't. No, maybe I was like protecting into- myself. I just wasn't. <laughs> I just didn't want to hear the part yeah. where the stranger. Would you say yes to a stranger's tweezers nowadays? No, maybe no. No. <laughs> no, if I was with with Fed and some random lady is like I'm trying to take something out of her. I'm like, you know, maybe she has like splinter in her finger and a random lady comes like, "Oh, I have tweezers." Like, "No, lady, shoot, no. Go away. What do you freak? You freak?" No. Oh. <sighs> God, where were those tweezers? Aline Gollard said, I cannot give an opinion here because it has to be something really disgusting to disgust me. Uh, tweezers. Uh, Pubic tweezers. Berika said, why was that stranger carrying an open tweezers? I have no idea. Because she mm-hmm. had like a mm-hmm. transparent case. No, and I'm not mm-hmm. like lying. No, no, They no, were I, like I, in a transparent case mm-hmm. and they had like a tape. And she was like, oh, I have something that might help. Mm-hmm. And she would like, she started like opening the purse. No, stranger danger. And she had like stranger a lot danger. of things. Ay, Nicolás, let me tell my story. And she took out the case and she took out the tape and she was like, maybe you can use them. And I was like, oh, thank you. She was like, they're new, by the way. So, and I right. was like, oh, thank you. That's how they get you all the time. No. Um... Aline Gollard said, enemy of hygiene, LOL. Um, Iván dice, me perdí, ¿cuál es el tópico de la discusión? <laughs> no, que me prestaron unas pinzas para quitarme un piercing. En un baño público. Mm, no Pú- es un baño público. Bueno, s- sí, mm. es un baño, es literalmente un baño público. Uh, Roslyn said, I can't stop laughing. When I meet Nicolas in the future, I'm offering him some tweezers. LOL. No. <laughs> Quickest way to end, um, you know, uh, the beginning of a friendship. <laughs> um, so, let's change uh, the topic. Let's right. go. So, I'm going to continue uh, saying hi to everyone. Oh, please. Yeah. Mm. Where was I? Um, Pablo Rojas dice, buenas. Hola, Pablo. Liet said, Nicolás, how did you get into teaching? And did you study anything on how to teach before you started? I'm going to uh, grab a juice, okay? Yes. Um, you want one? No, thank you. Okay. No, thank water, you. Water something? Yeah, I'll have water, but afterwards. I have, I'll, after we're done. No, 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 it's okay. Gracias, Lindita. Um... So I had done some workshops um, in some sort of studios before I was asked to uh, to go and formally, you know, teach at the university. And the the uh, classes that I had given, they were, I would say they were okay, but they weren't, I mean, they were teaching in the sense that you are teaching other people about what you know how to do. But I think they weren't anything other than that. They were just like, hey, this is what I do. This is how I do it. And um, that's about it. And everyone, I remember that if I, or if I'm, if I remember correctly at that time, like people were doing their own paintings, but um, so, so everyone's work was, was quite different, but I don't think I was, I don't think I had enough experience to be flexible enough to to know how to um, know how to understand each person as their own kind of you know particular universe and and respect their own sort of manner of of painting. So I'm pretty sure that that the classes were mostly hey this is how I do things and people were trying to sort of echo the way I would work, which is I mean it's fine but it's not great. Um, and then I was approached by a teacher from the university in one of my shows. Mm, he had brought uh, some students to one of the shows that I was um, having a- at the time. And um, I didn't know him. I didn't know him before then. And um, he was like, hey, uh, would you, you know, have you ever considered teaching at, the, at a university? 
And I was like, not really. At that point, I was doing very well with my painting, I have to say. I was very, very lucky to have had like um, uh, a very good, very sort of generous start um, in my painting career. And uh, so I had never really considered like a job. You know, I had done the other workshops, but there were things that I was doing because I kind of wanted to do, not because I needed to do. And, um, and I don't know. I thought, you know, this is interesting. This could be something cool. Um, the the uh, painters that I respect, my t my teachers, you know, were were just that. Were yes, they were painters, but they were also my teachers. So in my mind, I was like, oh, that's super cool. I mean, that's. I can kind of be what they were. Um, so so I said yes. And um, I started, I don't know when was that, sh when that show was. I think that show was around October, November. Yeah, November. And maybe they offered me to start uh, in January, teaching the uh, January semester. And um, I was horrible. I was absolutely horrible. I never had, I never... Um, I don't have an MFA. I don't have any other um, sort of degree or or any other um, course or classes you could take in in art education. So it was very difficult. I mean, I didn't quite see it as difficult as the time. I just thought like, oh my god, this is kind of challenging because it's very new to me. But I don't think I realized how difficult it is to to be like an actually like an like an what it means to be a teacher like an actual teacher I, I i think i was too young i started when i was 29 um and i think that's a little young i mean everyone has to start at some point and and i'm sure that regardless of of the age where you start you're always going to feel like you're not ready um I feel it was cool that I was young because I could I could connect with my students like in in different levels, but it was also not cool because I just didn't quite know what I was doing. That is the truth, and um, and I think it took me a long time. And by long time, I'm saying like an actual long time, probably you know six seven years to to understand what it meant to to be. A teacher um, and a lot of like mistakes a lot of you know beating myself up for for stuff that I couldn't control um, a lot of bad semesters a lot of good classes a lot of bad classes um, a lot of students being amazing a lot of students being mean because uh, students young students can be very very mean and um, uh, so a lot of those things. I think I, I went through the whole spectrum of what, you know, if you're a teacher, of what eventually you realize that, that that's going to be, you know, part of your life, that, you know, th those are the things that you're, you're sort of always going to be able to count on, that semesters are going are gonna to be tough, you know. Sometimes they're going to be amazing and you feel like the greatest teacher on this earth, and sometimes they're going to be so, so poor and almost like damaging that you feel like you're a piece of crap, that you, you know, what are you doing there? Like you have no reason to be there. You, you're, you, you can't communicate with these kids. Um, so very, very tough. I, I think that's like many jobs, um, but I think this one is, is, um, is a little bit tougher. It's, it's one of those things that there's no way, no way you, you can learn how to be a confident teacher you know, from the start or, or by theory alone, no way at all. Like you're going to have to teach and you're going to have to make mistakes and you're going to have to feel like bad because there's no way to, like, there's no way to hide behind anything when, when you're having a, b a bad semester, like it's for everyone to see. Um, so the bad semesters can come because you're you're in a bad place in your life or because just you know students you know collectively can decide for no reason for no reason that they're just not going to care about your class that semester i i don't think i've i've told i've told this story but um there was a uh, i i used to be like a i think when i started i used to be like a super kind of like carefree teacher i i thought 
you know, yes, I want to teach, but I also want to connect with students. So one of my priorities, which wasn't good in hindsight, this this was never really quite good. But um, I was like, no, 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 I, I'm not going to be the teacher that's um, that's annoying, that's boring. I want to be the cool teacher. And because I was younger, you know, younger, I felt that I, I was like, yeah, I, I can connect with with these kids. Like I can actually have like, uh, you know, stuff in common and I can feel cool about that. But I didn't understand that that also made them believe that they could just, you know, they could just kind of do whatever they wanted and that I wouldn't quite care, which was, you know, the farthest thing from the truth. So um, I, from one of my painting classes, I had, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was something like 19 or 20 students. And this was a big, big studio that, that we had um, at the beginning. And I remember coming in and nobody was there. And this was like probably mid-semester. So nobody was there. And I was like, oh, these idiot kids, they're going to be late, you know. And I never liked people being late, but I was like, okay, they're, they're going to be late, but they're going to show up. And like 15 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by, and nobody's there. And the only person that was there was um, was a person that was just uh, asked me if, he, if, if they could attend the class. Like they, they weren't really registered in the class. Um, I think they actually had even uh, not graduated because they didn't graduate from the university, but they had studied in the university and then, and then they had dropped out. But they, they had dropped out already and they just asked me if they could come to my class, which you're not supposed to if you dropped out because that's like going to class without paying, but I could care less. Like I'm never going to say no to a student that wants to go to class. Um, so they were the only person, like that was the only person there. And, you know, half an hour into waiting for these people, we were like, nobody's coming. And I, I was like, what is going on? Why is nobody here? I mean, I can understand, you know, three people not showing up, five people not showing up. That's like, okay, you know, maybe they, they have an exam tomorrow. Maybe they're doing something. Maybe they went out last night. You know, there, there's tons of reasons for a few people not showing up. And you're like, super fine. I'm totally fine with that. But, you know, an hour and nobody's showing up. I'm like, what don't I know? Like, what's going on? What is, you know, what are they not telling me? What's what's happening here? And um, and I remember, like, my friend who was there, Willie, yeah. I was like, do you know? Like, did you hear something? Were they saying something? Because, like, is there a reason why nobody's showing up? Like, are they, is, is this a way to protest? Like, that they're not going to show up to my class and, and, you know, I'm doing something wrong? And what the hell is going on? And Willie was like, I don't know. I really don't. I just, I don't know. I have no clue why nobody's showing up. And so I waited and waited and waited. And probably like an hour and a half, I told Willie, like, I'm going to go home. Like, it's ridiculous that I, I'm just waiting for, for people that are not going to show up. So I'm just going to go. I'm, you know, this is enough time. Um, you know, this is, this is long enough to wait for, for people. So I went, I went home and I remember saying, I'm going to write an email. Like I'm going to write a, the crap out of this email. So I wrote this email and I was very pissed. You could tell from the beginning that I was like super, super, super pissed. And I was like, are you like, if you guys want to, I think I started something like, because in my mind, I thought that this was like a concerted thing. Like they had all been talking, you know, kind of like behind my back. And all of them had decided to miss, you know, that class for some reason, because they thought it was boring or because they thought it was like, you know, the, the, I don't know. I have no idea what I thought, but I was like, they all know what they're doing. And they all, they, they all probably, in my mind, I was like, they all probably have like a stupid little group and they're all chatting with each other. And they all said, you know what? Let's just miss nobody go to today's class. Like nobody go to today's class. And I was like, if you guys want to tell me something, like you better tell me like to my face. Like if you want to say something, say it, but don't do stuff like don't pull crap like that. And I was just super, super pissed. And this is the funniest part. Nobody knew that other people were missing the class. Nobody. Like it was one of those things where 
you know, the universe just led them to believe that, yeah, they could miss a class. Like all of them, they thought that I was so kind of okay with people missing classes that they were like, oh, let's miss today's class. Like there's going to be other people there. There's like 20 people in class. Like for sure, there's going to be other people in class. And all of them thought the same way. Like everyone was saying, oh, there's, there's going to be other people showing up. There's going to be other people showing up. And in the end, the 20 people that were supposed to show up, none of them did. And uh, what was funny was that they were so scared the next class. Like I had a full class, everyone on time, everyone working. Like I, I got there and everyone was like super, super sorry. They were like, oh my God, we feel horrible. And we're so, so sorry. And everyone was like working, working. And I was like, oh my God, the power of an email. Like I, I felt, I actually felt super cool. It was one of those weird things that I had gone through that day thinking that I was the worst teacher ever, that, you know, my students hated my class, that nobody wanted to be there, that they were just, you know, they were pulling this stunt just to show me that, you know, they, none of them liked what was going on. When in reality, it was just like, no, it, they, they were all okay. It's just that I was being a little too loose with, with them. And they just felt that, that they could just, you know, miss a class and nothing could happen. So, so part that part gave me like a, a little bit of, of uh, peace of mind, but it also started, I mean, it took me years after that to understand how to deal with like 20, 20, you know, 18 to 20 year olds. But it took me years to understand that I, you know, there are other ways that you can gain somebody's respect and you just don't have to try and play or make it as if you, you're supposed to be friends. Um, and many of my former students are actual friends. Like I'll say that super proudly. They are super, super cool people. And they are people that I definitely, definitely consider my friends. Um, like Leech, for example, our mutual friend. Yeah. It's a, it's a, he's a friend. He's, he's literally a, a friend of ours. Well, um, he's uh, the friend that, um, yeah, that introduced, introduced us. us. So, so, but aside from, I mean, he couldn't have, if he didn't do that, I would still, even if he didn't do that, which is like an important part yeah, of my no, life. Yeah, no, but I'm trying to say that because I was visiting him. Like yeah. I was trying to go visit my friend. Yeah. And he was your friend and he was visiting you. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we met. Because he thinks about you as his friend. Oh, 100%. 100%. By the way, he, he wants to come here and, and visit us so, uh, so that he could also bring his paintings. So oh, maybe I'll, I'll... For sure, yeah. I'll try to set up something for this weekend. <gasps> I'm or, sorry, I... <laughs> what what did I do? No no no! I saw like something flying, like a little uh, mota. Uh huh. And I just like slam it, and I uh, kicked the cables of the camera. Oh. So it know. moved a little bit, but I never know. Fine. I never notice it, so don't worry. Um, yeah. So so we I've had like really cool you know relationships with people that I've um that have been my students or. I don't even understand them as my students anymore. Like, they're just my friends. Willie is my friend. Hmm. Like, that's just, you know, I, I don't see him as anything but my good friend. So, um, yeah, but I it took me years to understand that there are other ways that you can gain, you know, especially young people's um, respect that have nothing to do with just you trying to be cool or you trying to give them the idea or to to... Um, present to them this idea that that yeah sure you know I'm I'm fine like if you don't if you don't do this I'm fine if you do this I, it's cool you know regardless it doesn't matter um, I was a little too I don't know a, a little too loose I think at the beginning but I learned my lesson I you know after a while I think I you know when I decided to to quit. Um, which was 12 years later, I think I was doing things well. I think I was, you know, I had understood how to do things really, really well. But it pains me to say that it probably took me around 10 years to know how to do things well. And for some people, it's going to be less for sure. Um, and for some people, it's never going to be the case. I think I've, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna, never going to say names, but you know, I, I met people that they 
had been teaching for decades and they were horrible. Mm -hmm. They were absolutely horrible. So I think that there's going to be people that teach and they don't care. They don't care about getting better. They don't care about, you know, connecting with students. They don't care. They just don't. And they never will. So the, those, those people are never going to change. Sadly, those are the people that have like, um, that have the potential to have a terrible, terrible, you know, impact on young people's lives. Um, and that's, that's a shame that, um, that bad teachers can have uh, as big of an impact as good teachers can. That's a, it's a terrible, terrible disease, but, but it, it's true. So a good teacher can make you absolutely adore something. And, um, it, you know, my, my teachers, some of my teachers even helped me without them trying to. It wasn't like I was going to therapy with them or anything like that. But just by talking to them and just listening to them, it was like life. Like you have people that, you know, help you out through life. Um, those were some of my teachers. I, I can definitely say that. I'm super, super grateful. And they probably don't know or were never aware that they were having this in, that sort of impact on me. But I am 100% like honest when I'm saying that they had that big of an impact in my life. Um, so it took me a while to understand that that it's a job that I think that if you realize how how important you can be for somebody else, y you start to take it way more seriously. And it's not just about trying to be cool or it's not just about trying to like have these good relationships. Like, yeah, you you should try and have good relationships with your students for sure. But like their education and their well-being and their... Um, you know, it's about them first. It's not really quite about you. So I don't know. It took me a while. I, I do miss it. But the thing is, I there were a lot of things that I just wasn't... Um, On board with? Yeah, I, I do feel like um, formal education, especially in like bigger institutions, I, I'm just not... There's There were so many things that I'm not okay with um that and that i don't think are things that can be fixed from within the institution because a lot of like teachers and they're very um you know their intentions are always the best uh they always say like no we're gonna do the fight from you know inside the institution and it's like no dude it, you can't like if if that's the person like if that's the thing that's paying you there's no way you can you can create a change from within. Like it's impossible. It really is impossible. Like they control everything. Like, you know, regardless of what you're saying inside a classroom, like they control how the whole system works. So it doesn't it, you know, it doesn't make a difference at all. So I just couldn't I saw myself and I was like Am I really a part of like, for example, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Am I really a part of a, of a you know, one of the biggest uh, uh, private universities in Colombia? One of the biggest, you know, w for sure one of the universities that has the most money in Colombia, hmm. private universities that has the most money in Colombia. And they don't offer a single a single full scholarship for our um for our um career for our major not a single one not a single like that is ridiculous like there was no chance that a student could win a a scholarship like a full scholarship cuz they would have um semester based um Semester-based, GPA-based uh, scholarships, but I don't think you could win a ton of them in a row. I think you could no. only win up to yeah. some point, no, right? No, I was going to tell you that um, I know it because of my sister. Yeah. She got uh, a total scholarship, but because uh, you have to do like an exam yeah. when you graduate for from high school. Yeah. And she had the highest one 
in the whole university that semester, but it's only one person that has that. In the university? In the university. And it wasn't full at the moment. It was like 80% maybe. And then, because she had the highest uh, uh, grades yeah. in the semester in her uh, career, she also got uh, that... Um, I forgot. Scholarship, Scholarship. I'm yeah. sorry. She got it. So the university was like, I mean, you have this one and you got that one. So now you get uh, the 100%. But it's not like they have a 100% no, scholarship. And, and, uh, and I think she could have it. Yeah, she could have it uh, one time, yes, two semesters, no. One time, yes, two semesters, no. Because that was like the rule they had. Like, you can't win it. Or maybe it was not two times in a row. So she had it one yes, one no, one yes, one no, one yes, one no. And this so. is like specific to her faculty, which was a totally different faculty from from. Um, yeah, no, from but arts. but the one she got from when she entered the university is from the university. I know one. It's regardless of the career you're gonna study. I know one. Yeah, one. And we're talking about like an enormous university with tons of majors. It's not an art school. I don't know how it is right now with scholarships, but it's not good. I mean, um, they've never had, I think they should have a lot more scholarships. Oh my God, they have like enough a, money. Yeah. They underpay their teachers. They cut tons of teachers' jobs from, I, I say this and I don't say it. A lot of people don't, you know, and maybe I'm off a little bit, but not really. When I started, I would say there were half the number of students and twice the number of teachers When I, gra when I finally quit, there were double the number of students and half the number of teachers. I'm not exaggerating. Like the whole, um, well, how do you say that? Um, las, las clases que eran extra, ¿cómo se llamaban? Las, el catálogo de clases que eran... Las que no eran obligatorias, sí, electivas. Las electivas. Electives, maybe. I don't know, I don't know if that's a way, is, if that's you know, the way to translate it. But yeah, like they're be... not part of the curriculum, but right. you could choose them. Right. So there used to be a whole catalog, like a book of the electives, of the classes that they would offer to the students. And it was super cool because you could propose like a, like an elective for a semester and it could be like a little bit weird. And it was dependent on like the people that would um, would um, would take the class if they would open it or not, which that totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. But they were super nice, like they were super, super cool at the beginning because they were like, um, yeah, no, if, you know, if you, if this class will open up if you have um, X number or X percentage of students. So you could open up a class with like seven students, let's say, or six students, and it could still be like a super, super cool class. Um, and no, eventually they were like, no, 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 we're losing too much money because that meant that they were opening a lot of classes that were super interesting, but you know, because students were having such a wide range of possibilities in, in like picking classes. So what was going to happen, what was going to naturally happen was that everyone was going to spread out and that's beautiful. And um, so you would have a ton of classes that they would have to open up that had like, you know, six, seven students. And they were like, no, 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 we can't do that. We're wasting way too much money on, um, on, you know, Uh, teacher class, salary yeah. yeah teacher salary that's pretty much what it came down to and uh, they were like no we can't do this anymore so they killed the catalog the elective catalog mm. and um, they would only they they handpicked the electives that they were gonna um, that people could take mm. and um, they you know eventually that turned into the firing of um you know, dozens and dozens of teachers. Yeah, and I even remember when I was still studying, I w really wanted to uh, have a class, yeah. Fundición. I don't yeah. know how to say it. Uh, eh, um, I'm oh, gonna God. It. oh, God. It says Foundry. Foundry, yeah. Yeah, so Foundry. I yeah. really wanted to have it. And I remember... I even do the inscription for the class. Yeah. Like, because you have to do like the ins inscriptions. I don't know if it's like that in every university, but you have to do the inscriptions uh, like in one specific yeah. day 
of the classes you want. And I did that. And then I remember like two weeks after that, I got an email. Like the class has been canceled because there was not enough people. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, now what? Because <laughs> all the classes were full. Yeah, because they had to, like the idea was like, okay, now from now on, classes can only start with like, 16 people or 15 yeah, people. Yeah, no, but I remember in that moment, it was terrible. I even talked in the university and I was like, okay, but if you do that, then open more spots in the class, uh, in the classes that are closed. Because I remember it was like a terrible rush every time we had to do the inscriptions of the classes. Yeah. Because it was like, I mean, if you had like it at 12 p.m., the signups, yeah. If you were like 12.01 you would be missing a lot of classes you would want to have. So I remember afterwards, I was like, what can I see? Like, I thought I would have to um, have a class of another uh, career, maybe. Yeah. And I remember at the end, if I'm not mistaking, I was, like, I went to the university and they made a spot in a class I wanted to see. Yeah, but, but, but again, ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. So those, you know, again, those along with like many other things, I was like, I can't, I can't be so critical of how things work, you know, within the institution and then still be okay with them just paying my horrible salary. Like, I can't, like, this is not right. It's just not, nothing about this is right. Nothing. So, you know, I, I absolutely adore teaching but it's just, it just, that's not the way. I, I don't feel that's the way. So, yeah. Busqué un poquito sobre las becas. Yeah. Dice que hay una que se llama Ingresa Javeriana, mm -hmm. que es, eh, si uno no tiene los medios económicos, puede aplicar. Mm -hmm. Es, al parecer, es solo una sí. del 50%. So, 50%. So, not even a, a full scholarship. Hay una Half de... Um, so have scholarship based on the fact that you cannot pay for your... <laughs> it's like... Creo que es una, no sé. O yeah, sea, but it's like half. So what, is, what good does that do? Like it's based on on um, on the fact that you can't pay. You hay know? otra beca también de apoyo que es para la gente que ya está estudiando y no puede pagar, no tiene los recursos económicos. Dice que puede aplicar a esa, pero no dice cuántas son. En cada semestre, en cada mm -hmm. carrera, dan la de la excelencia académica mm -hmm. y es el 80% de la matrícula, ni siquiera es el 100%. Okay. Eh, hay otra que se llama Bachiller Destacado, que son 11 becas que se entregan también por el 80% a la gente con los mejores promedios de colegios. Mm -hmm. Y hay una que se llama Colegios Destacados que hagan parte de ACODESI. Uh -huh. Y son cuatro becas también por el 80%. O sea, para la cantidad de gente que hay en la universidad, yeah. no es nada. No. O sea, And no es como... There's not a single full scholarship in there. No. Not a single one. No. Not even... So, there's a financially based one. It's like, oh, I'm going to show you because they ask for paperwork. They ask you for, you know... You have to apply for it. You have to apply for it, but you have to show, like what your parents are making, where you live. So you can totally say, hey, I want to study here, but look, look at my uh, in my family's finances. We cannot afford this university. And they and that scholarship is 50%. Is 50%. Yeah, because I think 50%. about... It's like, The what? career, like the uh, art career. Yeah. I think it's crazy expensive oh, for here it's Bogota. Oh, it's disproportionate. It's yeah. It's so, so for disproportionate. For what... Uh, Like what the um, normal income is here in Bogota. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's crazy expensive. No, no, no. It, it's And if they tell you, no, I mean, it's not going to be crazy expensive. We're going to cut the 50%. It's just going to be expensive. It's yeah. like, um, no. <laughs> if you're applying for a financial, something that's financially, you know, kind of based, mm. chances are you can't do 100, you can't do 80, you can't do 60, 50, 40, 30. No, you can, you just can't pay for it. If you're applying for that, you're saying, I can't pay for it. It's not, I'm, I'm not saying I can't pay for 50% of it. I'm saying I can't pay. 
I'm Victor, sorry if I'm getting like agitated. Victor, it's just some of those things just drive me insane. Victor Torres dice, me parece que estás hablando de la Javeriana. Lo digo porque un amigo le dieron becas solo porque ya tenía cuatro hermanos más estudiando en la universidad. No, pues ya si uno está pagando esa barbaridad sí. de plata, pues ya que por pero lo igual, menos le den al quinto. Pero entonces tú no, uno tiene que tener no. sí cuatro ¿Qué, hermanos ¿qué más los papás, y que los cuatro hermanos puedan ¿qué estudiar tal allá. Los papás sí. pagando cuatro matrículas de la Javeriana al sí. tiempo. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Quién puede pagar eso? Sí, sí, sí. Kakeiro said, it was terrible doing the thing with the classes. Organizing the schedule was a nightmare. Yes. Because Kakeiro was also from the same university. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. So we have the Robins. Yeah. The Robins, the Row Rose. Because Robin is here. Hi, Robin. I just did the silly. Row my boat. I did the silly um, knocking of my knuckles. Okay, or let's call it knocking of my knuckles. <laughs> How yeah. do you say that? Uh, high five of, my, of knuckles. my knuckles. Knocking, high five of my knuckles. <laughs> yes, anything you want, anything you're saying. Yes. I like knocking of my knuckles. The knocking more. of my knuckles. Yeah. Um. So, let's see what people were saying. Hmm. Sergi Arts dice, hola, estuve escuchando todo el directo mientras pinto at sieve, jeje, las Ay, formas divina. en la chaqueta, OMG. <laughs> um, Brady Fellow said, what's the blue on your palette today? Uh, today and almost always ultramarine blue. Tani said, that's crazy. That happened to one of my friends recently for his English class at uni. Only three people showed up, so she just told them to come back next class. Oh, That's nobody. That's so sad. Yeah, nobody showed up in mine, by the way. And I, it's it's like, not as if, if one if one student shows up in my class, I'm going to stay there for the whole four hours, for sure. Mm. Like, no doubt in my life I would ever leave. I mean, nobody and you were lucky that you were with uh, Willie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie was there. Willie... And you know what's cool? That he is, will forever be my witness. Like, he knew what exactly... Mm. No, <laughs> he, that's He terrible. was there for that. He knew exactly how I felt, how messed up it felt. Liad said, that sucks that your students did that. Yeah. Uh, Julia Tovar said, best teacher ever, in my opinion. Ay, muy linda. Muchas gracias. Um, Mirta Siomeli Sandin dice... Todos los maestros empiezan como aprendices. En todas las carreras hay rookies y hay novatos hasta que las condiciones cambian. Admirable aquellos que por una razón u otra te enseñan con dedicación y cariño. Um, Así debería ser siempre. Uh, Cody Winicky said, That's one of the hardest thing about teaching. All of my students draw and paint in different mediums with different styles and different subjects, so a lot of flexibility is required. And Liad said, what about teaching workshops? Is that easier and funner? Mm, different, but in many ways it is easier. In many ways, like if, if you would have asked me what is objectively easier, oh yes, for sure. You know what I feel about workshops? Uh, too. I, I mean, I'm not talking about your workshops, but workshops in general, that when people are studying in the university, sometimes they don't have the best disposition for the class because maybe they want to learn something else and they have to have that class. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're like, no, my parents told me I have to go to the university, but I really don't want to be here. But in the workshops, I think it's different because no one is obligated to have the workshop. Yeah. And the biggest, I think the highest percentage of people that go to workshops pay for their own workshops. Yes. Or they, if they're young, maybe, and they're asking their parents to pay for it, they're like really asking as if it was like a gift. Like, please give me this because I really want to have it. Yeah. So I think it's very different Uh, the disposition of people, like that people have towards oh, for your sure. teaching or the teaching of anyone that's giving a workshop in a workshop. So I think it's like friendlier in that way. Yeah. And in the case of uh, your workshops, I mean, they know they're paying because they want you as their teacher. So like, you know that they're 
they respect what you do and they want to learn from you. Yeah. So that's like a very good thing to have to start with, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that exactly. The, the biggest difference, I think, uh, Danny, um, is absolutely right. It's, you know, there there is something that's just fundamentally different about wanting to be somewhere and then just having like, you know, having the, the, um, the design of, a of, of just whatever major, whatever you're majoring in, just tell you, you know, or obligate you to take certain classes. So mm -hmm. there, there is just a, this fundamental difference of, of, you know, you, your disposition and, and your commitment to something because, you know, you're paying for it. Like this is, this was your decision. Nobody, nobody forced you to do anything. Mm -hmm. So you can see it in people's, you know, um, just, just um, attitudes, mannerisms. When, when we're doing workshops, like for example, this last one in, in Menorca, it was a workshop about making people feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, through painting. And I mean, Robin's here too. Yeah, but it's it's very strange to say, hey, you paid for something that is gonna, you paid for this thing that's gonna you make paid you for feel, your suffering. Yeah, that's gonna make you feel like you're going, you're gonna go through tough times. Um, and people were super okay with that. They were totally on board with that. So you, what can you ask more of people than than just their, you know, commitment? But they all know it. They they they're all like, no, we're here. Like we are paying for this. We are we were looking for this. So you don't even have to explain it. You don't have to uh, apologize for anything. You don't have to nothing. Just you know, it's it's very cool. It's a very very cool feeling. Mm, Tani said. Yes, I have to take an intro to 3D class in order to take a sculpting class that I'm not that interested in. Yeah. No offense to sculptures, LOL. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's right. the thing that happens. I mean, I remember a lot of people in the university that were like, I mean, I have to take uh, three different drawing uh, classes in order to uh, do my audiovisual emphasis. So they were like, I'm not interested in drawing. Like, I really don't want to do drawing. I'm interested in uh, movies. And yeah. that was it. So, uh, Robin said, I think it made everyone show up and dig in. It was amazing. We came in blind too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, in the Menorca workshop, the people who uh, entered the workshop had no idea <laughs> what it was going to be about. I know that was a big, big, big um, leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good. Uh, that was pretty good. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. You nailed it. Knocking my knuckles for that saying. Oh, knocking my. your knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> Robin just said it's fist bump. So fist bump. What is? I only know knocking the knocking my knuckles. Your knuckles. Yeah, I don't saying, know what Robin's Robin, talking about. I have about. no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but that was amazing because, I mean, the description of the workshop was like. You're going to feel uncomfortable and we're not going to discuss uh, what exactly the workshop's going to be about, but trust us, it's going to challenge you. And I people know. just signed in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I even remember. Um, yeah, but that sounds like a dentist appointment or something like that. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound super attractive. Yeah. So I, I was... Um, I I knew I had to thank people. Like I, I think the first thing I did and, and I I tried to be kind of annoying through the week, but just I, I was very grateful for people that showed up because it just um it's one of those things that I had I didn't know how it was gonna work because we had we hadn't done anything quite like this before and I, I didn't know if it was gonna work. But I knew that if people were gonna show up and they they were there with the right attitude that of course we were going to try to make it work. Like there's no way in hell we're not going to really work hard to, to see this through. So yeah, I was very, very grateful. Ranar, so Abby. Mm. So we have the best friends here, Robin oh, yeah. and Abby. Robbie. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. I don't know, I don't know why I didn't thought about that there. Yeah. Robbie, I would say oh, you Jesus both Christ. would... Uh, turned. Yeah. Ranar yeah. said, yeah. and I became the meme of the whole workshop. 
<laughs> there was a yeah, there was a very funny image of Abby just like broken down, broken I would say. Down. Completely broken. <laughs> completely like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what moment <laughs> this was during the workshop. Yeah. I felt bad. I was like, oh my God. When and he was, was like this? in a corner. Or it was like um una viga. How do I say that? What? Like a column? Yeah, it was a column. He was like there in a column, just like absorbing the pain. No, it was it was um It was very funny. It was sad. It was very sad. It's a sad image. <laughs> I felt bad. I as soon as I saw that image, I was like I'm looking at it. Yeah, this yeah. is this is terrible. I mean, I'm sorry, um, Abby. I'm gonna show it here. Cause he was even like closing his eyes. No, this broken. is the meme. Completely broken. I mean, he was broken. Yeah. Poor Abby. Yeah. <laughs> um. Robin said, "DJ Danny Knuckle Knocker." What? Ooh. Remember you were looking for my name as yeah. a... Yeah, but that sounds like you're playing sets at like Hooters or something. I don't know. Hooters? Yeah, that's what came into my mind. I don't know. Robin said, I thought yesterday's painting of Fer was reminiscent of Broken Abbey. <laughs> yeah. It kind of was, maybe. It was in the back of your mind. Oh, always. Um. So I think I'm going to go a little bit back. Okay. To the comments, because I skipped a lot of comments when we started um, having the when conversations. When you were like, speaking about your knuckle knockers and the tweezers. Oh. Tweezing. Um. Regarding the tweezers. Okay. Brady Fellow said. That woman in the bathroom said, "I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship." <laughs> and then the two of them walked off. The rain, just like in the end of Casablanca. And that woman was my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and I was her mother, too. Oh, dark. you went to her not... The dark the, moment. What, a dark, a dark moment. I'm not saying anything. I'm just oh, saying Jesus. it was a Look, I'm dark not, moment. I'm not, saying, I'm not anything. saying anything. I am not saying anything. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Um... June... Jay Murillo said, "Hi guys, quick question. Yes. Did you get moleskin paper separately from a sketch or from a sketchbook? From a no, sketchbook? I don't think you can get the paper separately. No. So we we always have to like um, just uh, tear the uh, pages off the uh, spine. It's always a little messy, but yeah, that's that's the way we do it." Gonzalo Castro dice, "Hola chicos, cómo están? Hola Gonzalo, muy bien." Gonzalo. Si tuvieran que hacer un mural relativamente pequeño, ¿lo harían con óleos o sería una locura? Eh, ¿Y esto es algo que va a pasar, eh, Gonzalo? Gonzalo? Eh, pues creo que un mural con óleo 100% factible se puede hacer. Pues es que yo me sentiría siempre mucho más cómodo con con maneras de pintar que conozco, entonces, pues a mí, a mí no me, o sea, si me dicen, ay, lo puede hacer en óleo, yo estaría súper tranquilo, yo diría, sí, no pasa nada, sí déjeme ver qué tengo que hacerle a la pared, si ¿Sí le tengo que hacer algo, que creo sí. que no. Y pues sellarla después. Se puede sellar después, sí, de pronto con algún barniz acrílico. Y incluso, pues quizá, yo creo que uno hacer... Sintético, perdón. Uno hacer sus propios óleos porque el, el costo... Pero pues si le pagan a uno, quién sabe si uno le... O sea, si uno toma en cuenta, digamos que, no sé. Sí, pero es que si tú compras las pinturas de Pintuco, comparadas sí. con... Ah, sí, eh, si uno va a hacer un... Tubos un, de óleo. Es como si uno va a hacer un, 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 un eh, mural, pues, un mural o sea, en... en eh, en vinilo, pues, pues sí, o sea, eso es otra cosa. Pero, pero yo creo que, por ejemplo, las personas que hacen con aerosoles, los aerosoles son re costosos, los bonitos son súper costosos. Mm. Entonces, mmm, yo no, no veo por qué no uno podría como tener eso en cuenta a la hora de, de cotizar el trabajo que uno va a hacer. Um... So, momentico. 
Darian Gallardo dice, hola chicos, hola Darian. Darian. Callum said, hola chiques. Wow, mm. now with the Q, U and E. Mm. Hola chicle. Mañana dice, hola, hola chicles. Hola chicle, sí. Uh, had a feedback session for my animation work today. Oh, I what find, did they say? I find art feedback sessions so tough. Yeah. Offer is still there to be a background artist, Nico. And a <laughs> wink emoji. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to do... Uh, I mean, I would gladly help you if I had the time and the uh, disposition to do so. My disposition is there. Time is not there. And I know that we're probably not going to pay right now. So I know you're paying, you know, in... Um, what do they call it right now? Visit you, Visibility? Is that what... You know? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. going to pay you with visibility. Yeah, so thank you. No, so... Thank visibility, you. Visibility, don't thank pay you. my rent. Thank you, next. Yeah. Callum, so, oh. But but Callum, uh, what did they say? Why was it tough? I'm, I'm curious. Callum also said that Miloha is mm -hmm. the same in French. It's called Mille Folie. Oh, but... F folie? Mm-hmm. Is it Folie? I, it is how you're saying it. F e u i l l e. Fil fil mil mil fil. Mm. Mil fil. No, no, I'm just. <laughs> eh, mil house. Aquiles Caballero dice: Olis, linda tarde. Nicolás. Has linda not... tarde, no. Aquiles, no, está horrible. Está horrible la tarde por aquí. <laughs> Nicolás, ¿has notado cambios en las formas de abordar la pintura desde que empezaste con el canal hasta ahora? Sí. Yo creo que siempre, o sea, yo creo que, que no es que sea una expectativa que, que tengo ni una, ni una cuestión que estoy forzando como, como si estuviera forzando inorgánicamente, pero yo, yo siempre tengo como esa sensación de que tras el tiempo dedicado a un proyecto o sea, tras el tiempo que sea, o sea, si eran los primeros dos años de, de, de nuestro canal o si era haber trabajado como exclusivamente como en formatos pequeños y en, en cuadernos de apuntes, yo siempre espero que haya una, como un, un no sé si un cambio, pero que haya algo, que pase algo. Siempre, siempre tengo esa expectativa. Entonces... O oh, bueno, no es por eso no decía esa expectativa, sino que creo que es como que es normal si esas cosas pasan, porque es que pues uno va a tener, uno básicamente está teniendo una experiencia de vida que se está manifestando como en, en unos proyectos de, de una práctica de arte y pues yo creo que como todo en la vida, pues esas cosas al final tienen un efecto, o sea, al final tienen o, o, o deben tener algún tipo de impacto sobre la la, la vida de uno. Entonces, como que siempre estoy pendiente, siempre, siempre estoy como consciente de que esas cosas pueden pasar. Entonces, sí, seguro, o sea, yo no soy la misma persona en este momento eh, después de haber hecho esos videos, pero tampoco soy la misma persona o tampoco fui la misma persona después de que hice un poco de pinturas grises, pero tampoco fui la misma persona después de que hice todas unas, un poco tonón de pinturas que hacían una reflexión acerca de la reproducción de la obra de arte, pero tampoco fui la misma persona cuando puse unas pinturas de, dentro de unas cajas. Eh, no sé, o sea, estoy describiendo como así muy por encima eh, diversos proyectos que he hecho en mi vida, pero, pero no, yo creo que después de cada uno de esos proyectos, y este no es distinto a esos otros proyectos, o sea, lo distinto es que ahora pues somos dos personas, que eso lo hace muy, muy bonito, eh, pasando, digamos, eh, el tiempo, mmm, pasando tiempo y reconociendo cosas de este proyecto mientras lo estamos ejecutando, que eso es también muy bonito. Eh, entonces, la, esa, esa, digamos, que creo que es la naturaleza que más, más ha cambiado con respecto a los otros proyectos que hice, que pues ahora no lo puedo entender como uno propio porque no lo es. Es un proyecto que hacemos con Dani, entonces mm. es distinto. La, la, yo sí creo que la naturaleza es bien distinta. Pero sí, yo nunca, no, nunca digamos que para, para redondear, nunca, nunca quiero forzar un cambio, pero sí, sí, con base en las experiencias que he tenido, 
sí creo que uno no sale siendo la misma persona después de un proyecto que es chévere, que uno disfruta, porque esas cosas le enseñan a uno algo y, y pues en la vida lo bonito es coger como esas enseñanzas y, y pues seguir adelante, o sea, ponerlas en práctica de alguna manera y seguir adelante. Entonces, mmm, sí, seguramente hay, hay, o sea, sigo siendo el pintor, el mismo pintor fundamentalmente, pero, pero debe haber muchas cosas que, que han cambiado y que he reevaluado. Emily yeah. said, hey, hey, hey Emily. And Emily was asking, what's the best part of your day so far? Of today? Hmm. Hmm. Best part of today. Um, I did the, um, I went, it was a crappy day because I, I don't feel that well today, to be mm. honest, like uh, physically. I wasn't feeling too well last night either. Um, so I think I may have like a bug or something. Uh, but uh, it always gives me a sense of um, satisfaction when we can ship the paintings. Yeah. It always gives me like a, a really cool kind of sense to, to say, okay, today's shipping day. Um, we're going to go to FedEx. And it's always um, like a bit of a walk. I would say it's like um, maybe 25 minute walk. Yeah. And, Or uh, more no it's about 25 minutes yeah. but today it was like it was it wasn't bad going there it was no, just like really cold then it was like pouring but rain then it was like just like crazy yeah and, and i walk back. i always walk danny was like oh take an uber or something and i was like no there's it's gonna be it's gonna take a ton of time to find an uber again when uber it's because uber is the only yeah, yeah yeah one we have available here when it's raining it's like super expensive so i was like no no i'll i'll i'm fine and um But yeah, it was really, I don't mind walking in the rain, but it was just like cold and crappy. It's just like an ugly day today, or it was an ugly morning. I have no idea what it looks like right now. I think not Same. that bright, yeah. Um, well, you went with something super like meaningful with the best part of your day. I don't know what my best, because I was here right now. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's always, yeah. it's always nice. Videos yeah. are always like, even right now that. I'm not feeling super well. I like I I feel better when I do one of these than when I don't. I really do. It sounds like oh come on, just take a break or just don't do them. Um but honestly I do think I feel better if I do. And I, I and I know myself and I'll feel worse if I don't. So because I was going to say uh that I'm wait cuz I'm We're having again some bots again and again and again. Oh, it's fine. That's like. So, um, because I was going to say something dumb, but uh, dumb. when today when I was showering. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're, get, we're going there. Um, I had one of those moments where you're like, yes. Because. Uh, What happened? What where... did you do? I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this. Where we put our uh, soap. Yeah. It's not that sturdy. So it's sometimes like you put the soap and it just like flips and everything goes to the floor. Okay, never happened to me, but okay. Ay, but I totally get it. I totally Cuando get it. Y se cae. It's never happened to me. Yeah. Well, I don't know why you're I've saying that. I've heard yes. it. What? Yeah, Nicolás, cuando se cae la an, cosita el jabón. What do you keep an ear to the, uh, to the door when I'm yes, showering? Yes, I'm standing there <laughs> <laughs> when you shower. I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I'm truthful. It's never happened to me, but I totally get it because it's like, it's almost like hooked into the side. Yeah, and the there's other... like two so two soaps. Yeah. So, soap. The soap. I did, I said soap. No, 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 I know, but you went afterwards with so, so I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's so, okay. uh, when you have the one that's super heavy and you raise uh, super heavy. the one that's super light, mm -hmm. super light, uh, sometimes it falls. Yeah. And I lifted and i realized like in a millisecond yeah that it was gonna fall so i don't know how but i just like raised it and then i just put my hand ninja reflexes yeah caught it and yeah. it was there because it's always it like uh makes a turn and just like splashes the floor and everything's like bits of soap everywhere but i just like had it in my hand and i felt like a yeah ninja superhero ninja like so I was gonna say that was one of the best things of my day. 
today. That's aw- that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's a dumb thing, but no, no, I would go to sleep like after a, that. Yes. I would be like, I peaked. Yeah, this and I, is- and it's that like that sort of moment that you're like, no one's gonna believe me because they didn't see how, how amazingly, cool this was? like, how my ref- reflexes, yeah, were that neat at yeah. that moment. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hector Acuña. Oh, so Hector. Hector. Hi, Hector. Hector Hi. said, Hello, glad to be back after what feels like months. Hope you had a great trip. Oh, yeah, we haven't uh, spoken to Hector. Hector, yeah, long time no see. Hector, <laughs> how are you all doing? Well, if you're going to go with y'all, you got to... Yolk. 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 Egg, how Hector, are y'all doing? Yolk. Oh, Yolk. okay. Sorry, that was my bad. Actually, yeah. that's totally my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Ruined um, the joke. Darian Gallardo dice, Nicolás, una Darian, pregunta. Señor. Ese tipo de cartulina que utiliza se mancha por atrás debido al aceite del propio óleo. Pregunto por qué he trabajado con cartulina como soporte y termina manchándose por detrás. Eh, Me pasas... Hagámoslo aquí. ¿La Molskins? No, no, no. Como la pintura esa de... O sea, ¿la de ayer? No, prefiero la que está... Um, la del correspondence, visual correspondence. Entonces, so somebody's asking how much of the oil or paint actually is absorbed by the paper and then, you know, goes to the back of the paper. So this is this painting that we haven't finished this visual correspondence, but this is this painting. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, we're good, we're good. So this is the back of that painting. And you can see some oil spots for sure. I mean, it is sucking up oil. I don't expect it not to suck oil. But I would say it's fairly fairly good. I'd say it's pretty stable. So nothing major. Entonces, lo que está diciendo, o sea, si hay unas manchitas del el aceite que se absorbe, pero es que pues no se puede esperar que no absorba. Pero no, creo que el gramaje es suficientemente grueso como para que, gracias Lindita, como para que no, no se esté afectando tampoco el, la integridad del papel. ¿Estás bien? Sí. Yo creo Uh, Callum talking about piercings because I'm still in the uh, questions they did when we were talking about the piercings. Oh, okay, because so. I'm I'm hoping that Callum speaks more about what his um. Oh, maybe what let the me check. Crits were let me know? check if they have um answered. So let me read this one first. It says I've never changed mine either. So the piercing. Okay. I hated having my nose pierced, though. It made me cry. <laughs> really? Did it hurt? Because I don't know why I thought it was going to be like a, like terribly painful. And for some reason, it wasn't. Well, but and you I feel I'm also not... cried in the bathroom, so... I cried in the bathroom? Well, taking it out. Well, but it was different. No, and I didn't cry. You said literally that you were crying. Well, I was like almost crying. Tears falling down your face. That's what you said. Cuando me lo quité con las pinzas? Yeah, you were saying that you had snot and tears. No, no, when I... That's not when I take it out, when I had it done. When I had it done, that's what I said. One eye was crying and one nostril was like yes. pouring water. But it's not that I was crying because I... You didn't understand that part because it's not like I was crying, only my right eye. Okay, was, half of you was crying. Yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't uh, because of um, pain. Yeah, Danny wasn't crying. Ella was crying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There we go. Uh, mm. No, I'm, I was I was joking through all of that, but I don't know if if Calum refers to um, he was crying due to pain or just crying due to like inflammation or irritation or something like that. That That's probably the reason why, you know, tears come out and like snot comes out. Mm. 
Callum was saying it was tough. I just want to draw and animate and they just keep pushing and having a traditional storyline and narrative and it's just not in my wheelhouse. Mm, I'm doing the film entirely entirely traditional traditionally on paper though. So looking forward to getting stuck in. Oof. And Callum said it didn't hurt, but putting the piercing in after the needle almost made me feel sick. I would never do it again. Haha. <laughs> mm. Would you do it again? Mm. I would say. Mm. Really? It was that tough? No, 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 no. Not because of pain. Okay. But if I didn't have the piercing, I wouldn't miss it. You know? Okay. Like, I don't feel it's like something super crucial in what I like of myself. Like, because, I mean, I take it out and I feel the same. That's what I was saying at the beginning. Like, I don't feel it. It's like a dramatic change. Right. So, why so I like it. it why don't you take it out? Well, but why would I? Because then Cause the... it does nothing. No, because I still like it. I mean, it's like having earrings. But you know that I could have earrings on. And I also uh, can be without earrings. And I'm fine with both. Mm -hmm. So maybe I would have it. But if someone told me like, uh, you can't have it, uh, I would be fine with it. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I like it, but it's not uh, fundamental for me. Mm. Ektor said things are good just finish finished teaching for the semester and nice. have been busy painting and making frames y'all oh nice nice y'all that was a good y'all no? that was good yeah mm. Ariel Hernandez dice hoy que color fantástico Dani hola el de la chaqueta ¿El de Dani? ¿El de la pintura? ¿El de la ¿El chaqueta? ¿El de mi pelo rojo? Uh -huh. ¿El de mi saco blanco? No sé. Mm. Julia Tobar dice, hoy me vi el capítulo del origen de Héctor. Jajaja, <risa> <risa> por mi lado escogería huevo, cero fan del arroz. <risa> Julia está en un, en un Recap, binge sí. watching de Our Painted en Lives, este me momento, encanta. En este momento creo está que Julia sabe más de, 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 lo, de que lo que ha pasado que, que nosotros. Sí. Ayer creo que fue, eh, estabas viendo YouTube y como que pusiste un video. Sí, y arrancó. Y, y yo tuvimos una conversación dices? y tú dijiste, yo no me acuerdo, no de tengo... dicho eso. Idea de qué hablamos eso y yo te dije, yo tampoco. Yo no sé qué es todo lo que nosotros hablamos no, acá. estupideces. Hmm. Greñas dice, hola Daniela y Nicolás, un gusto comenzar una sesión Greñas? de pintura con ustedes de compañía. Saludos, muchos saludos para Greñas. Ay, wait, wait. Um, we have to block another user. But are they being disrespectful? Are they like... Oh, it's, it's is, spam. Or are they just linking like dumb no, stuff? No, it's... Yeah, because it's a bot. I mean, it's not like they are saying something. It's like the users say to go somewhere to see some things. Oh, yeah. But can I tell you something? Don't. Like, if those were comments or something... Or no, they I just... were being like... There's... I'm, I'm, I'm only saying this because everyone in the chat is going to know that's a bot. And for you to, like, block them does nothing. No, like, but you know... nothing. You know why I block them? Because when I don't, I mean, they're a bot. So they can send, like, 50 messages. Like... Yeah, yeah but they're going to keep sending them. It doesn't... Like, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't... No, because I'm blocking them from the channel. Yeah. So the bots have been different. No, but trust me, then I wouldn't be able to read the comments of the people. Because... They start sending and sending and sending and sending. So, has it gotten to that point? Well, I remember once I didn't, and they were there were like eight messages in a row, like so. In a row, row. In a row, row. Mm. Let's see. Mm. A ver. 
Manuel Hernández dice, uh -huh. hola chicos, ¿cómo les va? Yo ansioso porque sea diciembre, ya quiero su libro, saludos. Ah, Ay, muchas gracias, muchas gracias Manuel por el apoyo. Ya pronto. No, falta un poco. Ya, pues pronto. No, es como si Fer me pregunta, me dice, uy, pronto Navidad. Yo le digo, no, Fer. Pues no. es que yo quiero pensar que es pronto porque en diciembre yo no, yo vamos no. a tener a Chile. Ah, bueno, pero todavía Entonces, no. Falta bastantico. No, pronto. Pero muchísimas gracias. Nosotros también estamos muy entusiasmados. Mm, a ver. Eh, Nano Espinosa uh -huh. dice, hola chicos, los escucho mientras trabajo, pensando que la educación ahorita está tan cara, ¿qué uh -huh. plataformas digitales recomendarían para aprender slash mejorar en dibujo y slash o pintura? Uy, yo, yo no, o sea, no, no, no estoy tampoco así súper al tanto de, de específicamente, por ejemplo, los cursos. Yo he visto los cursos que da Proco y son chéveres. He visto unos cursos que da la New Masters y son chéveres. Eh, pero si, si soy honesto, o sea, yo buscaría como los artistas que me gustan y miraría si tienen como videos de Gumroad o miraría si tienen videos así en las páginas de ellos que ofrezcan o en las plataformas que de pronto donde ellos estén, si están en ArtStation o si están aquí en un... o, o si tienen un canal de YouTube. Eh, yo me guiaría más no por grupos grandes, sino por artistas individuales. Mm, no sé mucho, si les soy sincero, no, no sé cómo son esos... Mm, esos videos de de doméstica de, de, de algunos artistas, sé que hay artistas que han hecho videos de, de doméstica, lo que pasa es que yo soy como un poquitín crítico de doméstica en, en algunos aspectos porque yo no creo que los artistas estén ganando suficiente con esos videos, yo creo que doméstica gana por el hecho de estar ofreciendo una gran cantidad de una gran variedad de videos pero el, los artistas que lo están haciendo, yo no creo que ganen mucho. Yo creo que los que eh, tienen esos eh, videos de software sí están ganándose una, una, un buen porcentaje, pero, pero yo creo, yo por lo que he visto de, de, de cuántos videos de arte ofrecen eh, y del número de veces, porque ellos muchas veces ponen número de veces descargado o número de... Creo que... No, ellos ponen es número de es? estudiantes. Exacto, sí. Entonces... Eh, Guiándome por eso me doy cuenta que no, no son los, los de arte no son los más populares, o sea, en, eh, y por muchísimo. Entonces, no sé, o sea, yo, yo, lo que yo haría hoy en día, yo si me dijeran, oiga, tiene que, puede, puede educarse usted mismo, o sea, eh, va a tener, eh, digamos, si fuera... Eh, si yo tuviera un trabajo o si fuera muy joven y mis papás me dicen, oiga, no le podemos pagar universidad, pero le podemos pagar para algún curso, entonces busque un curso y díganos cuánto cuesta y ahí miramos. Eh, yo estaría buscando es artistas específicos, yo no estaría buscando eh, realmente como, como instituciones. Ese sería mi... Mm, no, es un buen tip, eso no sería, había pensado eso. Sí, eso sería mi... Porque es que yo, yo creo que si un, o sea, si uno tiene la opción de, si uno tiene la opción como de encaminarse de una vez hacia lo que a uno le gusta y si uno está súper convencido, pues fantástico, hágalo de una vez, como que métase de una con eso. Y pues la forma más fácil eh, de hacer eso es, es diciendo, pues yo no, no, no es que quiera pintar exactamente como ella, pero pues... Quiero tomar un curso con ella y ver qué me puede enseñar ella sobre su experiencia laboral, eh, eh, sobre el tipo de portafolio que debo tener, sobre prácticas del trabajo. O sea, yo, yo ya estaría pensando en cosas como muy, muy, muy específicas, muy, muy particulares. Pero de nuevo, ese sería mi camino. Además, ¿qué implicaría resto conocerse a uno mismo? De pronto esa es la parte difícil. ¿Lo que tú estás planteando? Sí, sí, porque tienes como que decir, o sea, yo ya sé lo que me gusta. Sí, es que yo, o sea, 
estoy de acuerdo con lo que dices y creo que puede ser muy bueno, pero estoy pensando si esa decisión la tuvieras que tener tú, tú recién graduado del colegio. Sí. ¿Qué tan fácil sería tú decir, listo, voy a mirar esto? Uy, perdón. Uy, el aplauso y no tenemos no <risa> que... Ahí, Yo hasta me dolió a mí en los oídos. Nunca me ha sonado tan duro una No, frase. no, no, me dolió a mí. <risa> en la vida. Eh, <risa> pero como que uno no... O sea, si yo hubiera eh, tenido que elegir yo los artistas, uh -huh. yo te conté que yo quería hacer eh, ilustración para libros infantiles. Sí. Entonces yo nunca me habría abierto, digamos, a la posibilidad de conocer la talla de madera. Porque hubiera pensado es que mi camino es este y yo creo que nos, o sea, yo con certeza diría que mi yo recién graduado del colegio uh -huh. no sabía muy bien lo que le interesaba del arte, sabía que le interesaba el arte, pero siento que me sirvió como eh, ver de todo un poco para empezar a conocer uh -huh. mi camino. Sí, pero eso, ver, Por es... ver de todo un poco es como... Es, es no, la universidad, todo. exacto pero, pero cuando tú quieres escoger como, o sea, yo supongo que si uno quiere educarse, uno también quiere ser medianamente eficiente para que el costo no sea tampoco tan alto, porque entonces, pues, si se vuelve altísimo, pues, pues hubiera ido a, la, a una escuela de arte, hmm. entonces... Mmm... Pero piensa que tú querías ir por cómic. Sí, sí. Entonces, digamos que tú nunca hubieras conocido la pintura, o no. sea... Exacto, por eso, por eso estoy diciendo que... Mmm, sí, pero también hay veces pienso, bueno, y si yo hubiera sido un artista de cómics, ¿sería miserable? O sea, sería... No, obvio, no, no, no. Pero estoy diciendo es que... No, 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 no te lo decía a ti, como, ay, es que sería... No, 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 me estoy cuestionando a mí mismo como, bueno, y si mi camino hubiera sido otro, si mi camino hubiera sido hacer cómics, o sea, ¿hubiera sido terrible eso? Y yo pienso, no, pues seguramente estaría gozándome hacer... Así como me gozo el pintar, estaría gozándome el hacer cómics y estaría tratando de hacer como los cómics más chéveres que puedo hacer. O sea, hubiera sido otra vida, otra vida, pero no quiere decir que hubiera sido menos vida que la que tengo ahora. Margo Delgado dice, Nicolás, tengo la impresión de que la cabeza es pequeña en relación al cuerpo. <risa> es premeditado. Ay, divina, sí, Margo. Margo. No, Margo, está, sí, sí. Margo, en esta es evidentemente más pequeña. Sí. Porque desde el comienzo, Margo, hablamos que eh, iba a tratar de hacer como una serie de, de exageraciones con, en términos de las formas. Pero muy y de linda, las Margo, que lo dice así super para. Súper respetuosa, que... Margo, sí, como. Muy linda. Nicolás, no sé. De pero, pronto es la cámara, pero, pero. No sé, Nicolás, pero a mí desde este Ay, ángulo divina. yo no quiero decir nada, no estoy tratando de ser irrespetuosa. No, Margo, tan linda, tan linda. Sí, pero, pero ya lo habíamos, lo habíamos dicho al comienzo, Margo que pues ese iba a ser como el, eh, la intención de, 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 este, de esta imagen y es buscando, mm, es un poco haciendo referencia a lo que decíamos ayer, que era mm, en la búsqueda de, de quién es uno como artista, en la búsqueda de ese trabajo como que es, que, que lo identifica uno y que tiende a ser súper personal. Eh, ayer decíamos, como, bueno, cómo son... ¿Cuáles son unas maneras de tratar de acercarse hacia, hacia eso que puede empezar a uno a entenderlo como un trabajo personal? ¿Cómo, se, ¿Cómo son esas, o sea, cuál es esa práctica que uno puede seguir para eso? Y yo decía ayer que algo que se puede hacer que es relativamente sencillo es, es como exagerar las cosas que lo, lo mueven a uno, lo conmueven a uno. Y el grado en el que uno las exagere pues va a decir va a hablar muchísimo sobre, sobre el tipo de artista que, que uno es. Entonces, hoy pues quería mmm, evidenciar esa, esa mmm, desproporción, digamos, y, e incluso desde el comienzo dije que, que lo que estábamos tratando era de ocupar el ancho del sustrato para ver eh, in, y cuando no se puede, ¿no? Cuando esto es claramente una, una horizontal, pero vamos a tratar de ocupar o de copar el ancho del, del sustrato para ver eh, qué tanto pues se, se empieza como a, a transformar la imagen. Callum was saying, uh, when you were at New York's SVA, Nico, yes. what was your weekly work line? Were you studios? 
Where you studios? Where you? I don't know. I didn't get that. It says where you studios. Mm, oh, studious. I think that's what he's saying. Como estudioso. Se escribe studios. S T U D I O S. I think studious would be with a U in there. Maybe. Maybe is that what you're trying to say, Calm? Maybe. Yeah. So if it was about. I thought it was where you like allowed to have studios because. There's universities that uh, gave like yeah. own studio space. And the question said, also, Danny, what were you like in your uni career? So, so I'm going to guess it's studious. Uh, but could you look for that word? S-T-U-D-I-U-S or I-O-U-S? I don't really know how to spell it, to be completely I frank. O-U-S. Studios. Studious. Yeah, O U S. Okay. Studious. Yeah, spending a lot of time studying or reading. Yeah, that was me, a hundred percent. But I also had my other sort of nightlife. That um, nightlife. Yeah, I used to try to. I know. That sounded yeah. Um, no, I I used to I used to try to do everything I needed to do, you know, um, and and have at least some hours in the night. Uh, to to myself and to hang out with friends and to go out um but always always being super responsible first like there was no way in hell i had a scholarship also so i had to maintain like a gpa um so i was never going to put that in in danger um and uh and so first things first like i was always always just incredibly responsible I, I graduated with honors. I, I had like a really high GPA, and um, it, but it it it's because that's the person that I am, and also because I wasn't dumb. And I, they were giving me like I had like a um, department grant like every semester, uh, and they were giving me money, and uh, I had my scholarship also. So I wasn't about I wasn't gonna throw that away just because I was gonna. I thought a class was dumb or boring or yeah, I was just super, super responsible. And I, I would say I was responsible. I was, mm, I always, when I look back, I think that I could have uh, gained more from my studies than I did. But I think I was always responsible. Um, like I was always in class, I always did the works I had to do. And when I think maybe in my third or fourth uh, semester, I started like getting to really know what I wanted. Not like specifically what I wanted. It wasn't like a clear thing, but I was like, okay, I like this more than that. So I started putting more time into that uh, classes without letting the others uh, unattended. Like I was being super, um, I was giving every assignment, I was doing everything, but the one, the classes I cared the most, I was like really trying to give my thousand percent because I thought I could gain a lot from that classes. And, um, I think maybe I didn't, uh, like I wasn't as the full, fullest as I thought I could be because I was also working. And when I look back, I don't know how I did it because I was uh, working. There was a time that I was working Thursday, Friday, Saturdays in the night because I was bartending and then I had to do like... Uh, I had to go back home and do a painting or do a sculpture or whatever. But I I think I was uh, a good student. I would say that. Um, yeah. I don't know what you have to say because you, know, you knew me when I was a student. Oh, no, like, but we I'm were not in a relationship. For you. No, no, no. No, no, no. Well, no, no, no. I'm not going to speak for it. Like, okay. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't I, think it's something bad, but okay. No, no, no. But I would never. Like, that's your experience. I would never. I would never speak about how you feel. Yeah, and I would say I would have loved to be as uh, into every class 
as I was uh, with my thesis. Because I really, really was into it. Like I gave every part of me to doing that uh, thesis. And I think I would have learned more if I was like that with every class. But again, I mean, I think when you graduate and you look back, you're always like, ah, I could have done more. But I do think I enjoyed it a lot. And as Nicola said, I mean, I didn't have a scholarship, but I, I knew my parents were paying for it. So for me, it meant like they're doing a big effort. I should pay back to what they're doing. I mean, I'm studying what I want to study. Why would I not be attending to classes? So I was uh, always attending my classes. Mm, Swiss was asking you, hey, do you use reference? Yes, yes. So today is a pick I took of, of Danny. So yes. Mm. Irvin Torres Art yeah. said, hello guys, it's been a while. Hola Irvin. Eyes to catch you live today. Eyes? Uh, nice, maybe nice mm -hmm. to catch you live today. How about that painting? Love the shades of yellows on the shirt. Oh, thank you. Mm. Uh, Shiana said, Nicolas, una pregunta. Sí, Shiana. What do you think of uh, Leindecker art? Jay-Z Leindecker? Oh, he's one of the best illustrators ever. One of the best painters ever. He's He was absolutely amazing. A genius, genius, genius painter. I think I've often said that out of, um, out of all the painting manners, like illustration styles, particularly of those like, you know, kind of golden age illustration, um, but like early 20th century illustration, Uh, but, but, you know, even beyond uh, that, I think Leindecker has the most sort of pristine, uh, distilled style out of any artist that I've ever, ever seen. It's, uh, it's, in, it's, in, it's like immaculate. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, and I, I've often said it, but his studies are some of the most beautiful works of art that you'll ever see in your life. Uh, so I, I've been able to, been super lucky to see a couple of those um, in real life and they are something else. But no, a genius painter, genius. You cannot, you can't paint better than that. You, you can't, you can do things differently for sure, but you can't paint better. He's an absolute genius. Callum said, Ah, my Instagram just updated to a new aspect ratio. It What? looks horrible. What? What? Is this AI Callum speaking or is this like... AI Callum because mine is... Yeah. It's not square anymore, Callum? Did, um, did Elon Musk buy Instagram and made it <laughs> rectangular? That was the big change that he made. Daniel Arthur said, Hey, Nico and Danny, I'm painting with you guys today, trying to emulate every brush stroke, hoping to see through your eyes. Oh. <laughs> so grateful to have you for company. No, that's awesome. Mm. Boa tarde. Your mom said, e Modigliani. La Olguida. You know that that's, I think I've told this story, but What? maybe not. Um, that's kind of like one of the worst things that I did when I was in, well, this was my, my freshman year. So now I look back and it's super cringy, but I think back then I wasn't trying to be a smart ass or anything. Um, while I'm looking for a, a brush. brush. I'll, I'll just use one of these. Is it maybe? No, no, I'll just use one okay. of these. Thanks. Um, I, we had to go to the MoMA and copy something. Mm -hmm. And we had to copy one 
in like color pencil and we had to do another one in i don't know we had to do a bunch of like different media like one in charcoal one in color pencil it was very very first semester thing very foundation thing it's you know kind of boring but sure um and uh i decided to cop to copy to copy i decided to copy the uh the uh, Modigliani. There's a reclining nude at the MoMA. It's very nice. It's very, very nice. I'm not the biggest Modigliani fan, to be super honest. Um, which, with the amount of, of like distortion that I do, you would figure that I would be more of a fan, but I'm not really that big on him. But anyways, so I was copying the, um, the, the, the painting and... Um, we had to show them in class the next week. And um, so I, I don't remember if I finished the copy at the uh, museum or this if one? I had to. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, that one. Exactly that one. Um, or if I had to take it home. I think I, I think I had to take it home and then go back. Something like that. It was something like that. And um, I remember when I showed it, my teacher was like, what the hell is this? And I was like, what? And and um, they were like, where is the distortion? And I mean, I was 18, you know, <laughs> just turned 18. So I was like, no, 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 it was too long. So I fixed it. <laughs> that was my answer. I was like, no, no, no. I just felt it was too long. So I, it, I fixed it. And my teacher was like, so yeah. mad. I fixed it. It was like, you're <laughs> such an idiot. Like, it was like you ridiculous. That the the whole point of that is that it's elongated. Like, why would you ever think that you would have to fix anything? But that was me. I I I don't think I was trying to be pretentious mm -hmm. or like smart. I think I was just being ignorant. I I think it was just being dumb and kind of stupid. But um, but yeah. So that's my my Modigliani story when I was like barely eighteen. It's sad. Well, but you were not like bad intended. You were not no, like... No, no, no. Like I said, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to be smart there. I wasn't trying to make the class laugh. I mean, that's a that's a long con because it's like hours and hours and hours of copying this thing in like color pencil. So you don't do that just for a bad joke. Hmm. You don't work like hours and hours and hours just, you know, to have the classroom kind of giggle. So, did everyone giggle? No, I think everyone thought like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> idiot, what an idiot. Alejandro Morales said, ha, 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 I fixed it. I'm cracking here. No, What a no, great was, anecdote, no, Nicolas. it was terrible. It was terrible. I felt, I felt dumb. I remember feeling super, super dumb when I, you know, like, what, what am I? What is, what was that when I was younger? Well, I was yeah. a little more of a smart ass than I am right now, but, but, um, but I don't think I was trying to be mean. I was. I, I don't think I did it for those reasons. I was just dumb and and kind of stupid, you know, 18, so. Liad said, at that age, I was naturally a smartass. I didn't have to try. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think it was just, it's like, it's like when I hear Samu speaking, I can see so much, or I, I'm not saying I can see much of myself there, but I'm so reminded of how I thought, like how, or how it felt better, how, how it felt to be like, you know, that age. Samu will sometimes use words and he <laughs> thinks he's using them properly. And then he, you know, then I'm like, what are you trying to say? Cause I don't know why remember, you're using that word. I remembered about the, the lunch, mm -hmm. what he said last time. Um, I don't, there's so many. No, the, the he was describing what he had for lunch. Oh right, right, right. Like, yeah, there, there oh, he it mixed a, it up. There he mixed it. But it's so cute because yeah, I think that when those. you're a beginning to be a teenage, yeah. you do that. Yeah, like you're, you're like, no, I mean, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And everyone's like, what are you saying? Like. Yeah, your brain is just like your mouth is going faster than your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your brain isn't even that smart. So, <laughs> so that combination of just hormones having a big mouth and uh, not really a brain to back any of those things up, 
that's pretty much being young. That's yeah, very but I much think that's being young. yeah, that's being young. I I think what you did was not bad intended. No, no, no. But I I still I'm still super embarrassed with myself <laughs> like there because I think I genuinely I I remember genuinely answered like answering like yeah I just thought it was too long. Like I in my fixed like it. my brain <laughs> saying like whoa that's too long come on dude like pick it up. Um, yeah. Eh, tres pelos dice. Uy, levantamos a tres pelos. ¿Quién sabe qué va <ríe> no, a hacer? Mira qué dice. Va a hablar de quipitos hoy o ya algo. Ya entendí el chiste de Dragon Ball y un emoji llorando. ¿Cómo así? Tres días después. <ríe> Pero tres pelos no es colombiano. Dragon Ball qué está hasta ahorita. No. Porque es el chiste más como. O sea, se entiende en tres, en tres segundos, se no eso? en tres días. Como al grano. O sea, no, sí, no. No, tres pelos ahí sí grave. Grave, grave. Tres pelos de frente, diría yo. <ríe> Víctor Roca dice, hola a todos. Me sorprendí y me gustó. Me hizo acordar de los jíbaros que estudié en la escuela, las cabezas reducidas hasta el tamaño de un puño por los indios de Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia y Perú. Sí, chévere. Aquí había... Creo que supuestamente aquí había en el, en el Amazonas eh, unos indígenas que, que reducían las cabezas. Que eso era como una cosa... Yo me acuerdo que eso en los ochentas, pues cuando yo era niño, eso era como... ¡Uy! Los indígenas que reducen cabezas. ¡Cuidado! Bueno, eso es... Por eso, los ochentas. Mm. Mm. A ver, a ver, a ver. Mm. Cody Winicky said, and he brightened up a Caravaggio. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What? Which one? No, no, no. Oh, I mean, okay, you were okay. Saying, yeah, yeah. My younger self fixed, would have done that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was I mean, no it was limit. too dark. There was like. no limit for my <laughs> idiocy. So, yes, for sure. Uh, Dallas Rayburn said, I love this so much. Oh, Dallas, you're awesome. Thank you. Mm. Callum, talking about Instagram, said, it's because they're pushing video formats over photos. And he was saying, no, they're moving to a longer aspect ratio to fill the whole screen. Mm. How? Are, do you have beta? Are, are you like beta access? Because um, I feel that the videos always fill all the screen, but not the square posts. Right. So I don't know. I don't. I think Instagram is like has a uh, has a um, like personality crisis that they've been trying to fix. Yeah. But nothing was broken, but they just saw TikTok being so popular that they, or or they saw, what was before TikTok, the uh, ghost thing? What was that? Snapchat. Snapchat. They yeah. saw Snapchat happen, and then they saw TikTok, TikTok happening, and um, they were like, oh, we have to try to be this too. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, we have to also try to be this. Oh, yeah, because with Snapchat, they did the filter things in yeah. the photos and yeah. the stories. Because I remember, I mean, stories were like a Snapchat thing. I didn't use Snapchat that much, but I knew they kind of copy that from um, Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think they want to do everything, but it's what's saddest is that they forgot that what people liked in here and what people, the reason why people still have Instagram, regardless of like all those other um apps that are far more popular uh, and maybe not newer generations for for sure i mean well my daughter has instagram so i don't know i think that but she's never on instagram to be honest like she's always on on tiktok yeah she uses it as like for chatting yeah yeah and samu no i don't think he's ever on instagram no no never ever or he's like um like ghost user maybe maybe like he just sees uh things 
But and I've that noticed too. that younger kids use it as a social app still. Like they'll post their pictures, their friends' pictures. Like it still kind of manages to be like a social-ish app. And um, but for visual artists, I think that it was the app. It was like where you could find like the most um, kind of entertaining uh, media and uh, and the most talented people and. I I think it's very sad that it's clear that they never really cared about that community. Yeah. They just, you know, they were like, okay, this is, you know, for us it's the same if people, you know, or 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 they see it as no, 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 there's there's been artists here and there's been people that post their, you know, their trips here and then there's people that posted their food here, but it's, you know, they they don't really care about if that could be also you know your your income hmm. and um and the thing is uh through through instagram i mean you don't at least in the cuz well most of the accounts that i follow are artist accounts mm -hmm. you, it's not super clear how promotion works in instagram i mean i guess if it's super obvious if you follow some like Kurda like kardashian who's the most popular one the 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 one with the uh, makeup K stuff kylie so kylie jenner so uh so it, I, i'm sure that it, when she's pushing like creams and makeup stuff and i don't even know what i'm talking about <laughs> but i'm sure that's obvious but for artists and for everyone else it's like no like it's not really an app that's meant to be, you know, squeezed for advertising. Mm. It's not. It's really not. Um, I would even get super, super bored if every, like, if I followed someone and in every single story they were advertising something, yeah. I'd be like, oh, good night, like, goodbye, I'm not following you again. Because it just doesn't lend itself to be that um, that app, that, that sort of app. But then if you think about it, then you know, the money that they would get from those deals, they are getting, they're getting through hmm. socializing through Instagram, but it's outside of Instagram entirely. Yeah. It's completely outside of Instagram. And I just think that that's what Instagram hates, that people can be millionaires, like those people that are making millions in advertising. They're making money and Instagram doesn't see a dime. They don't. So they are pissed. I'm sure that they are really, really pissed. And they're always looking for a way in which they can have like a little bit of that. They I mean, want they, a little bit of that. They could do like the easy road and start uh, monetizing and letting people monetize. They should do. I think that would be Because that would be the easier thing. I mean, right. it's like you can monetize your content and we're getting a cut. Like YouTube. Because right. YouTube has a cut. Yeah. And fix a, fix a stupid damn algorithm Fix your stupid damn, um, uh, um, the way, I feel like the way they have it where if you feel, like nipples, for example. I, I see so many nipples in my Instagram because I it's mostly an art Instagram that I have no idea, none whatsoever, none, none, why they are, why there are nipples that, you know, are going to give you a strike mm -hmm. and why there are nipples that are going to be like fine because they're nipples. You know, it's not like, they, oh, this is a sexy nipple and this one is a relaxed nipple. So Yeah, th or this like, is a oh, homely. this is a painted. Yeah, no, I, I don't even, I've never blurred anything on Instagram. I don't, and I don't know if I have many uh, nudes. No, many I think you nudes, have a couple. But I do have a couple, but I never felt like I should blur them because it's ridiculous. It's mm. absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. That would mean that a museum could never have like an Instagram yeah. uh, handle. Like that Modigliani, is that, well, well, we would have to check the MoMA, uh, um, the MoMA account, but. Is that what? If that's in the in their account at some point, like if that's somewhere, Ooh, I don't know account. how to look for that. Yeah, but I'm sure that they won't strike the MoMA account or the Met account no. or the Louvre account. I'm sure of it. I'm sure the Louvre doesn't have to blur nipples. I am positive. So, 
the way censorship works in these apps is it's ridiculous. It's it, like, I have no idea how it works. I have no idea. I don't think there are human beings behind it, or maybe there are reviewing and they're idiots and they're absolute idiots. But, um, but no, the truth is it's kind of broken. It's, it's like really, really broken. And I do think it's kind of sad that we feel like this is a tool that we depend on because honestly, we don't. We don't depend on it. We don't. It's, that is the truth. And I think the day it just disappears, we'll have to look for something else. We'll, we'll look for something else and we'll find each other again, I'm sure. And in the meantime, we'll just go to like old school and we'll paint and, you know, old like smoke signals like, hey, we're live. Look at the sky. We're live. Um, I don't know. We'll find a way. But I think it's super important for artists to understand that these things, they are like ephemeral. They, they will go away. They will. And right now, for example, I think they're broken. And we are in the waning hours of these, some of these uh, social apps because it's, um, it's not, you can tell that a ton of things are not right. But, um, but the cool thing is, is like knowing that we don't need them. We don't, we really don't. We'll, f we'll figure something else out. And when they disappear, I'm sure that an hour, uh, an hour, a year after that, somebody will come up with something way cooler, way more inclusive that will eventually have a ton of problems also. Cause that's just the cycle that everything goes through. But, but I'm sure that, you know, the important part is never to believe that you depend on these things. Never, ever, ever, never. I always remind myself that I was fine before Facebook. I was fine before Instagram. Like I was an artist before Facebook. I was an artist before Instagram and I will be an artist after those things. Like Yeah, and it's not like you're not recognizing that it helped. Of course it you. helps. No, of course uh, it helps. Get in touch with a lot of people that didn't of, knew your work. All the good but, things. No, no, no. Are yeah, true. no. But wait, wait. I'm saying wait. that it's not like you don't realize that, but it's also like you're an artist regardless of that apps. I I think that the most powerful thing that you can do in life is tell whatever things that you think, you know, you're dependent on. Realize that you are not beholden to any of them. None of them, none of them. You're not, you're, you are far more powerful on your own. So never ever feel like you are beholden to any of these things because they are crap. They're just crap. They're crap that we've managed to use very wisely and can produce really nice results. I think we are part of, we, we are proof that it could be really cool, but like I said, I won't, I will not shed a tear and I will not be nervous and I will not give it an ounce of, of thought or care the day that, you know, somebody says, oh my God, did you see that? Like Instagram is dead. Like, what are we going to do? We'll do something else. We'll figure it out. Like, why are we going to be scared about that? We'll find somewhere else. We'll do something else. Like that's, that's the way it's always been. And that's the way it's going to be. So Ah, uh, pretty fellow said Daniela and Nostradamus predicted downfall of Instagram. <laughs> um, Julia Tobar dice sí, yo creo que la muerte de Instagram está cerca. Mm. Sí, es que está, es que se ha degenerado muchísimo, la verdad. Sí, porque yo me acuerdo la época en la que cuando uno buscaba muchas cosas de artistas le sugerían. Sí. En la como sí, como en la página de la Lupita, lo de las recomendaciones eran súper buenos, súper chéveres. Yo llegué a conocer artistas muy chéveres por esas sugerencias y ahorita me meto y aunque yo no vea contenido como de eh, reels es lo único que me sale. Sí. Y como que son cosas como de no sé un slime. Yo digo yo cuando en la vida he visto un slime en Instagram, o sea, cuando le he dado clic a eso para que como que el algoritmo crea que es lo que yo quiero ver uh -huh. o lo que yo busco en Instagram, eh, yo creo que es que ya no les importa. No. Ya ellos sugieren es lo que, lo que eh, está lo que viral. Ellos, sí. sí, lo que creen que, que es viral, punto. O sea, no les importa ni siquiera ver lo que la gente en realidad busca en Instagram. 
Como que les tratan de inyectar esto, es lo que tienen que ver en Instagram y punto. Que de nuevo, no sé qué les significa a ellos. Yo, yo pensaría que solo están empujando cuentas que están pagando publicidad. De pronto. Claro, porque es ah. que, ¿y cómo se está haciendo la plata? Es que Instagram solo se puede hacer la plata eh, con los, la publicidad que vende. Ellos no hacen más plata, ellos no mm. tienen... No hay ninguna otra forma de la que ellos se hacen más plata. Entonces... Pues e incluso lo, con la publicidad están siendo súper canzones. A mí por lo menos yo me meto a Instagram y es dos posts de cuentas que sigo, dos posts de como publicidad. Sí. O sea, es como lo que sigo publicidad, lo que sigo publicidad. Es... Sí, no, horrible. Oh. No, 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 yo también, yo... Ah. Liet said, I don't think you have to worry about med Meta. Making money off of Instagram, Mark Zuckerberg is just is doing just fine. Oh yeah, but they don't like they're they're doing fine. But it, if they see somewhere, if they see a project that's not making money and that could make money, they're not dumb. Like rich people love money and control and power and information. They, you know, they're not like yeah, this is nice. Let's let it be. No, no, no. They're always trying to find a way to make a, you know, how can we squeeze, you know, a million dollars more out of this? How can we squeeze then 10 million, like 10 million more? How can we squeeze 100 million more? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're fine, but not really. But they, they, they don't like to see think, something stagnant. Yeah, they're fine, but they're not content. Yeah, and they're not dumb. They, they, they didn't get to be, be rich. Content. They didn't get to be rich by saying, I'm fine with this. Like, I'm okay. Julia said, I think we slowly have to start migrating to cooler apps. Yeah, but nothing nothing right now is um, big enough or is um, sort of ubiquitous enough that, um, that you could say, hey, this community is like super cool. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's, you know, let's all make this effort in trying to, you know, be here like uh, grassroots level you know let's start let's do the heavy kind of lifting so that this community can be really really cool i there's nothing out there like that miguel fonseca said call me nostalgic but i miss the old Flickr days <laughs> Flickr was kind of cool <laughs> I, was... I wasn't a regular user no of Flickr, for me no. Flickr was photography Um, yeah. To me, Flickr is like synonymous with like images photography, uh, and and I I followed Flickr for ex like explicitly for foot for like photographers' work, but they there were like amazing photos in Flickr, like amazing photos in Flickr, and it was cool because eventually Flickr had like um, the possibility for you to to uh, download the original size. I guess their servers got big enough. Then they started charging for that, which was crap. But, uh, but uh, you know, I, I remember at the beginning where it was like free. And, and so if somebody had like a really high res photo that you loved, they would just, you know, upload it in that res and you could just download it. I remember downloading so many photos that were so cool. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it too. That one wasn't, It wasn't super, super popular. It was never, ever popular, but I no, really it liked it. No, it was. Flickr? It was, but it, it was, was never like, it was never, young people were not saying, hey, I got my pictures in Flickr. No. Yeah, no, because I think that that started with um, like MySpace and then Snapchat and then. Right. But, but for a thing to blow up, it has to be, everyone has to be there. Mm -hmm. Like nothing will ever blow up if it's just artists. Yeah, and if it's just like artists, like us artists, if not, there's there's Art Station. I don't know how old Art Station is, but you know that's already there. It's uh, I don't know if it's broken. I don't really. I don't. I do. I have an Art Station page. I forget. I think I do, but I I just have it to like look at stuff. I don't. I don't think I've ever uploaded anything. Or maybe I did at some point. <laughs> mm, for me, I think. My place for looking at art nowadays is uh, Pinterest. You love Pinterest. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I, I think. You don't use it. No, because I think the, uh, I really don't like the interface. I really don't like the fact that you can't, I think it's super clumsy. 
Why? Because I love to like click on something and I love either for that image to get bigger or for that image to send me directly to where somebody took it from. That's exactly some... what no, 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 does. no, 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 yeah? no. What they do is like you click it and then it'll give you tons of other folders like... Or maybe this image comes from these folders. No, because And these not, are the related images. No, no, no. Because you're not... I mean, I think you haven't used it in a lot. Oh, no, no, no. But I, look, when for I look example, at art. This painting, and you just have to click the description, and you will get to the page where the image was taken from. Not, and what you have down are suggestions that are related to that image. So and, it's not like folders that are... No. And, and the little, the little um, magnifying glass, it's useless. It's useless. Why? No, because that's for a search of a similar image. It's I know, like those an image are, search. No, those things, it's too much. It's too much. Well, I think, for you, I love it. No, and you can I download the much. images. I think it's way too much. Well. I think it's way too much. And I think in, in terms of... Each one their age, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> and I think in terms of image quality... <laughs> I think in terms of image quality, it's not good enough. Like, I, I, I don't like... I don't like that you can still go to Pinterest and you can find like JPEGs that are like 100 by 130 pixels. Like, come on. Julia Tovar dice, Pinterest es lo máximo, Team Danny. No, yes. yeah, I never, I máximo. never. For no, art, igual I never. no pasa nada. O sea, hay mucha gente que no le gusta. A mí me encanta. Eh, eh, dice William Felipe. Uy, William Felipe dice, hola, ¿cómo van? No, but, and the other gracias. thing, if I could just finish, if I could just finish, bueno. um, just I'll, I'll, the last thing. And the thing is, Pinterest is not a, a social media. No, it's not. Site. No. But Flickr wasn't social media. Uh, you could so. comment, but yeah. But you no. can comment in, in yeah, Pinterest but that, too. Yeah, but so. you're right. It's not, it's an image searching like algorithm. Mm -hmm. Like if you like this, let me show you this. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. But um, but I do think that there has to be a social aspect to what we do. Yeah, of course. Right, right. So oh, Pinterest yeah. is just... If we have a Pinterest account, it wouldn't be... I mean, it wouldn't do no. anything because it doesn't have like a community Pinterest is behind like, it. hey, you can't sleep at like 4.30 in the morning. We'll throw you into a rabbit hole of images that, you know, before you know it, it's going to be 10.30. That, that's what, you know, Pinterest is to me. Uh, Lapis Exilis. So, uh, Shade, Shade said, Yuck, Pinterest. Detested. <laughs> Maybe I'm too old for it. Haha. <laughs> no, well, I, don't I mean, I, don't I think, think it's, it's an age not thing, for everyone. To be honest. But I, I like it. I never like it. Let's, let's put it this way. When I was younger, never liked it. I think that you have to use it uh, too much to have like a very good algorithm that suggests uh, cool paintings because I think I've found amazing art there. I think and it's, it's like super spot on. I think it's clunky and clumsy and Well you think and that's good. I mean you don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. download it. No I'm well uh, oh my god look you, at you like you defending. don't have to no 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 yeah. no 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 I'm just saying are we uh, are no, we are we uh, supported by no you? is uh, it you're just like super mad about no Pinterest I just like it. I mean, no, I'm a user. I'm not defending you, them. You're I don't not defend a user. like big. I'm, of course, I'm a user. Well, I mean, if you have an account, it doesn't mean you use it. Of course, it. Yeah, of course, it is. Like Danny, I'll never defend like big corporations. Never. It doesn't matter. Okay. It could be like PlayStation that I love to play games on. The minute they do something that's super crappy against consumers, I'm like, F you. I don't defend. Like, why would I ever? Like, that's what cor like huge corporations do. They make you believe that like, oh, you are like, yes, you are part of our family. No, no, I'm not. No, like Apple doesn't give a crap about you. Microsoft, Microsoft doesn't give a crap about you. Uh, Meta doesn't give a crap about you. None of these people care. Hakeiro dice, amo Pinterest también. Tengo mis tableros ordenados y me dan sugerencias de lo que quiero ver. Amo. Yo también. A mí me gusta mucho. Uh, Cody said, I just got on Pinterest for the first time and it's kind of meh. I mean, you don't have to like it, uh, but I think that it's an app that needs uh, time for you to really get to know what you like. At least I like it. I mean, we know Nicolas doesn't. No. But you could, I mean, if you want to give it a try, just give it a little bit of time to see more accurate uh, suggestions. Mm. Dice, 
Estaba diciendo, en, interrumpiste el saludo de William Felipe. Qué pena, William Felipe. William este. Felipe decía, hola, ¿cómo van? Los, muy bien, muy bien, William. Los he extrañado, ¿cómo les fue en Menorca? ¿Disfrutaron? Sí, nos fue muy, muy bien, bien, muy, muy bien. Afortunadamente. Eh, Dios. Sí, no, y extrañando también que William Felipe ya casi no viene a las eh, Pero porque estudia, porque estudia. ¿Estudia? Sí, ¿no? Trabaja. Trabaja. Y estudia. No, estudia, creo que no. Eh, tres pelos dice, en Instagram hay mucho post postureo banal. Saturado de pintores atractivos sin camisa mostrando pintura figurativa como portadas de sojo, ya es un cliché de la plataforma. No, yo, si yo me pongo sin camisa a mostrar pintura, se acaba todo. Pero igual yo creo que lo chévere de una red social, o sea, obviamente ese no es el tipo de posts que consumo y con Nicolás hemos hablado un montón de eso que es como... Nah. Qué lástima que la plataforma como que muestre eso nomás, pero yo creo que una red social... Debe estar abierta para cualquier tipo de persona. O sea, la gente que le gusta eso, perfecto. Pero yo creo que para la gente que no le gusta eso, también debería haber espacio, que eso es lo que yo creo que ya no está viendo. Como uh -huh. que eso es lo que muestran. De arte, uno siempre ve como la persona que posa como con la pintura. Ahí como en pijamita o en calzoncillo, lo que sea. Está bien, o sea, por eso yo digo, si a la gente le gusta consumir eso, está perfecto. Pero si a mí no me gusta consumir eso, pues también debería haber sugerencias para mí que no soy consumidor de eso. Y ellos solamente están diciendo, pues ese es el contenido de arte que vamos a empujar, punto. Yo creo que ahí está el problema. No en que la gente quiera postear como su pintura en bikini, está perfecto. Sino que, pues para los que no, repetí lo mismo 100 veces, pero para los que no... No, no, no. itera, itera. Eh, para los que no... Por favor, otras sugerencias. Muchas gracias. Um, Liat said, Art Station is more for industry artists and digital artists. Yes. Mm. But I think they're doing something right. I mean, they've been there for years. And um, like I said, I can't, I can't really say anything about the um the space because i only i only only visit that space very very um sporadically but every time i visit it seems to grow and grow and grow and it seems to be bigger and bigger um and it does seem like in industry based but i i do feel like people can use it as can use that site as a portfolio so it's actually quite interesting i don't know how much visibility it gets to you know other people in the industry, it would be awesome if other people um, are actually watching, you know, that that website when they're looking for jobs, when they're looking to hire, um, because that would mean that it would have like a, a very kind of quantifiable impact. So. Alejandra Ardila dice, hola, saludos, Nicolás y Dani. Hola, hey, Alejandra, Alejandra, ¿cómo estás? Uh, M.A. said, Tumblr was the best. I didn't use Tumblr. Uh, me neither. But Tumblr, like, oof, Tumblr had its uh, dark, uh, dark moments. It was, it was like the Wild West Tumblr. William Felipe dice, no, ya no estoy estudiando, jaja. Empezaron a hablar de Instagram porque ahora se ve todo feo. <laughs> o sea que William Felipe también tiene la actualización. Eh, o de pronto estaba diciendo todo feo como... El contenido, o es que empezamos a hablar esto porque alguien dijo que... Alguien es Callum, Callum dijo que... Eh, se le actualizó la aplicación y ahora tiene como un... Eh, eh, ¿Ratio se dice eso? ¿Ratio? No, no sé cómo se le dice. Aspect el... ratio. Sí, no sé, una proporción distinta. Una proporción no distinta. Nos, no, no sé. A ver, no, me dio curiosidad ahora. No, no Enmecemos con eso. Ratio en español. ¿Relación? Puede ser, sí. Pero, no sé. Ratio. ¿Relación de aspecto? No, pero eso suena... Mm. No suena tan... No. Uh... Me encanta. Es como... 
Así se dice. Mm, no. No. No, no me sirves. Mí. No, no. Voy no a decir me sirves. ratio. Gracias. <ríe> Lapis Exilis, so shade, said, also, literally, all my arty friends love Pinterest, so I'm sure I'm in a minority, definitely. No, I think it's like 50-50. Because I think there's people that really like it and there's people that hate it. Eh, Luca Guadagno. Mm -hmm. Guadagno. Eh, si es italiano que parece, sí, Guadagno sería. Luca Guadagno, pero es en español. Ah. Si es relación de aspecto. Ahora las fotos se van a ver más estiradas hacia arriba. ¿Cómo así? Tengo curiosidad de ver. Mi Instagram no. En mi, yo no sé a mí qué me pasa, pero a mí siempre es lo último que se me actualiza. Porque sabe que te gusta es Pinterest. Entonces dice, ay, váyase a Pinterest. <risa> si se vino a quejar acá, vaya a Pinterest. Eh, Margo dice, Daniela, me recordaste a Mafalda cuando defiende algo. ¿Por qué? ¿Cómo? No, me recuerda a... Um... Ay, ¿Cómo se llamaba? No, Felipe, a Manolito. A Manolito defendiendo qué? la tienda, más bien. No. Pues sí, porque estás defendiendo una cosa que uno no... Pero es que yo no estaba defendiendo, mentira, yo mentira, estaba mentira, diciendo... Mentira. Sí, mentira. primero, tranqui, yo oh, estaba diciendo oh, era porque, porque me gustaba. O sea, la verdad es que no estoy defendiendo nada, Mi, pues Pinterest no me significa nada. Estaba pensando era que las sugerencias que eran chéveres de Instagram, que yo llegaba, que me llegaban, perdón, eh, que yo en ese momento podía decir a mí... Instagram me gusta mucho porque me da esas sugerencias. No las tengo ahorita y siento que sugerencias parecidas en arte las tengo en Instagram. Por eso dije, ay, en Pinterest, perdón, y por eso dije, ay, a mi Pinterest me gusta mucho. Y ya, o sea, no pasa nada. Nicolás habla porque no. si no haces que esto se vuelva como... No, 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 no. Salgo aquí peluquea, más peluqueado que no, no puedo estar. No puedes estar. Salgo, no salgo te pueden imposible. Peluquear. Ya no hay pelos para quitarme. No, no, y no te estaba tratando de decir a ti, es que siento que no defendí, sin, o sea, estaba dando mi punto de vista. Eh, William Felipe dice, sí, y el texto está sobre la foto y tiene como un degradado desde abajo. Uy, horrible. No. ¿Y a ti te cambió? No, a mí no. O sea, digo horrible la descripción. Sí, no le digas así a William Felipe. Horrible, William Tampoco, Felipe. estás de una criticona hoy, oye, y por William Felipe ahí quedó. Oye, pero ¿por qué criticona? No estoy criticona. A mí, yo me di cuenta que el loguito cambió. No, eh, a mí no me ha cambiado nada. Sí, a mí, yo vi el loguito cambiar, pero los posts los veo como iguales, ¿no? Está pues, todo igual. de pronto no se te ha actualizado. Yo no sé, lo veo igual. Igual de malo. <risa> So, I think, um, Daniel Ira. Mm -hmm. What, what I, do you think? I think, um, I think that I'm done. I think so. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I think so. Mm, I'm looking at it, but I'm still struggling a little bit to see it. Um, but, um, to see it what? No, to see it as a whole. It's just so difficult for me because I'm so up close to the oh, painting yeah. always i mean you could see at this you could look at the screen no, i can't see, i can't turn my head um because it looks great from here but uh i think i'm i think i'm good i actually do i, I do think this is this is pretty cool um so i'm gonna leave it here mm -hmm. and try to talk a little bit about what um we were sort of going for uh today but uh like i said i i you know i initially talked about uh how how for i don't know completely arbitrary reasons i really like you know when you wear like those creamy yellow or yellow jackets i just i just think they're cool there's nothing really you know deeper about that i just mm -hmm. you know sometimes i think things are cool mm -hmm. honestly and that's where i would stop and but that feeling to me is like enormous so all the statues and figures that i have like I could care less. Like, somebody could come here and say, oh, my God, this is lame. And I'll be like, dude, this is, like, the coolest thing in my life. Mm -hmm. And nobody can rob me from that feeling of saying that something is cool. 
Mm -hmm. And honestly, cool is just a way to say something moves me yeah. in some way. And sure, like if, if we dig in deeper and if we try to elaborate, we can probably find reasons as to why we think things are cooler. To me, a lot of it is nostalgia. To me, a lot of it is remi like reminding me of things that I liked as a kid. And um, But I also remember that things that I liked as a kid were the things that made me want to be an artist. And it's wonderful to have reminders of the th very things that, you know, kind of shaped your life, you know, so early in, mm -hmm. in, in your life. So, um, or shaped the future, you know, so early in your life, uh, what was going to be the future so early in your life. Uh, and, and I, when I look around this room, I just feel cool. I just see coolness. Like I, I, there's no other way that I can describe it. And I realized that that feeling can sound, I don't know, like, um, um, like it's too little, like, honestly, that there's, I can't imagine trying to be in front of like, um, a crit session, you know, in, in front of like a review or, or a portfolio review or a, you know, end of semester review in front of like five teachers. And they ask you, why did you paint that? And, and you say, well, I thought it was so cool. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, thank you. Good night. F like what does what does that mean that's like the barest of of um of comments it, it's just nothing there's there's no effort in trying to investigate why you feel moved but i'm not in school and i don't have to answer to anyone it's the cool thing a lot of people have a lot of people a lot of people that go through painful experiences in art school for example they dread being adults Saying adult is actually like the worst thing that you can say to a young person. And honestly, the coolest thing about being an adult is that you're not, you don't have to answer to anyone, nothing. Like you're not, nobody is, is like reviewing you anymore. You're not in class. You're not getting, you know, nobody, you don't have to hand in anything. Nobody's going to read your text and then grade it. You, there's nothing dependent on 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 what you write or what you like or what you don't nothing so in life you could just say i love this this is so cool like this is cool it's it just fills my soul it's super cool that's it period i don't have to explain myself i don't have to say anything i don't have to like why why do i have to try and and convince you why something that i like is cool so i i really do feel that you know, that's the sort of visceral um, reaction that I have when I see certain things that, it, you know, they don't really matter. Like, who cares? Like, if this is like a yellow jacket, you could be wearing a dark jacket. You could be wearing, wearing like a jean jacket, um, a, a leather jacket. Who cares? But there's something that I like about these. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw the shape and I was like, oh, let me see if I can push this shape. And that's it. That's it. And something that simple can be the the um, kind of like the necessary um, light that that will ignite just a, a whole painting. Something that small and that insignificant and that simple. If you know how to nurture it, if you know how to take care of it and carry it through the execution, it's enough to make a painting. It's more than enough to make a painting. So. I've I've always been super protective of those things. A lot of people think that that's crap. Like, come on, that's you know that's stupid. That's not a real reason. You know, come on, painting is a serious thing. Uh, painting is for painters. You know, it, this is art you're talking about. You can't just say something's cool. You can't just say I like the jacket, so I'm going to paint the jacket. Um, come on, make an effort. Make a make a better effort to to do this. Uh, and no, no. I, I mean, sure, there are other artists that I even admire profoundly that do that. Um, in my case, sometimes it's as easy as that. It's like, I thought this was so interesting and this was so cool. And that was it. And that's it. That's all I want to say. So to me, these shapes were cool and I just wanted to make them cooler. Mm -hmm. Or I thought they were cool and my brain was like, you know what? We can make this super interesting. And that's it. That is it. That is all there is to it. If that's too little for people, then 
I was going to say I apologize, but I don't apologize. No, 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 no. It's This is why I paint, and I love it. I love every second of making a painting. And forgive me if I'm sounding, like, defensive over that because nobody is attacking me. But I've, I've felt how that feels, you know, when you're in art school, when you're a professional afterwards, like, when when um, you... you um, you put your paintings up for review, be it for um, a show, a competition, or anything. Um, there's always, you know, there's always going to be a judge, like an overly judgmental eye, like looking at your paintings. Um, and sometimes, like, you just want to, you know, try to, like, hope that they could see them through your eyes and say, look, there's, you know, this is the reason that I painted this. And I'm gonna. I'm trying to because I'm. I'm. I'm going a little off the rails here, but I'm trying to like go. You know, way way back to the uh, the first thing that we we um, started talking about at the beginning of the video, which was, you know, how do you convey that which moves you in your painting, and how is that message um, uh, communicated effectively to the people that are you know um, acting as observers of your painting. So much, so much that they know that even though that, even though that's not their personal experience, even though maybe this jacket, when they see it, they don't care about the jacket. Maybe they look at my toys and they don't care about the toys, you know, but how can they as observers look at something that they didn't inherently care for and say, wow, that is cool. The way they see it is super cool. And I had never thought about seeing a jacket that way. I had never thought a jacket could be cool. That's what we're trying to do. Like what we're trying to push is to say, and we have to be almost like defensive about it. And maybe that's why I'm sounding a little like um, sentimental, uh, you know, when I'm speaking about this, but we have to be willing to like defend it. We have to be willing to say, you know, okay, that which you find incredibly boring is going to be the source of my painting, is going to be the source that provides all the energy that I need to make my painting. And you don't have to get it because you're not seeing it. You know, what, what, when you see whatever I'm seeing, you see nothing. You see absolutely nothing. You see a jacket. You don't see anything else, uh, you know, beside, besides a jacket. But when I see it, it's like I see an opportunity to paint. And... I'm going to try to show you, not because I need to convince you, because you, like, I, and, and this, I'm trying to speak in my mind to, like, every people that has ever, like, dismissed me or, like, every people that has ever dismissed you guys in a show, in class, and everything. It's like, I'm not trying to convince you or uh, of anything. You know, that person that is judgy. I'm not trying to convince you because I don't need, I don't need to convince you. I don't, I really don't. Because you do not validate what I do. It's like, I, I'm not going to, if I painted this and I'm so satisfied with it, the fact that somebody else looks at it and says, oh, wow, now that's good. It's like, dude, I knew that was good. Like, I liked it from the beginning. That was why I wanted to paint it. That's what moved me to paint it. Like, thank you for saying, yes, you know, I see it the way you see it. But don't ever believe that you're validating what I do. Don't ever, ever, ever believe that. And and I'm super strong when I say these things because I, I really don't like, and art is full of these people, when we think other people, we need other people's approval to validate what we do. We, we really, or we search for other people's approval or we yearn for other people's approval. And we don't. I mean, and I'm speaking about personal work. Like if you're working for a company and, and you know, you have an art director that you have to answer to and there's like a video game being made or a movie being made, like, okay, you need to like understand hierarchies there and you need to understand what your job is, you know, what, what your job entails. But I'm speaking about personal work. When you're dealing with personal work, like if there's a critic outside that suddenly says, oh, I finally like this. It's like, dude, Get the hell out of here. Like, I, I don't care if you like it now. I remember the 10 years that you didn't like it. You didn't like anything I did. So now what? Now you think that you finally liked it and, and I'm like, I'm going to be nice to you and I'm going to be grateful that you finally liked it as if I was working for you all these 10 years to try to appease you, to try to convince you that what I'm doing is good. It's like, hell no. So I, I don't know if I'm sounding super salty now. Mm. A little bit, maybe. No. But... 
But no, because it's not as if you're fighting with someone. Exactly. Yeah, I'm fighting with like, the, uh, with an idea. You're just like being open about how yeah. sometimes we feel. And I think, like I certainly went through many of those people that could care less about what I did, and and find and found no value in what I did. So I'm kind of, I'm being. I, I think I'm being. Um, I think I'm being super, super passionate about this because I really do think that, you know, when we speak about style, when we think about finding our voice, um, when we think about what what is it that makes our painting, our painting, like feel like that there's an individual behind, you know, a work of art. It has to it has to prompt these responses. It has to you you have to be willing to die on that hill. You have to be willing to like go under with that boat that is sinking. You have to be willing to say, no, this is what I like. Like, this is me. This is what I like. I don't care that you like it. I don't care if you like it, if you dislike it, if you were in love with it. I don't care if you, if it means nothing to you. It's like, no, it, this is above any of those things because this is me trying to like answer entirely, entirely to myself. There's, there's nothing you know, that there's n nothing in that equation that at that moment that involves you, the, you know, the other person. The other person comes into play when you socialize it and when, you know, this thing starts to become like something else. But at that moment, but at, when you are paint, like when you are painting it, you can't have the socializing aspect of it like in your brain because then you're just painting for other people. And then just don't call a work personal if you're painting having other people in mind that's something else that's a job and that's... even if you have it afterwards i don't think you should uh always receive everything that you get from people because mm. i think that i mean you're saying like when you socialize it you're gonna receive that type of uh like feedback feedback yeah but sometimes you know what feedback can make you grow mm -hmm. and sometimes you know what feedback is just there to try to push you back right and i don't think you should absorb that because i think you are and you again talking at, yeah. as like oneself is the only one that knows uh what oneself wants as an artist and so needs. if you like yeah. pushing uh uh for example here like you like pushing what you saw that attracted you or if you wanted to paint your room with your figures and there's someone that comes and say hey it's a great painting but don't paint your figures it's like uh you don't need that comment you know it's like that comment wouldn't do anything to you because you you did that painting for a reason yeah so i think you shouldn't be open to every comment that comes oh yeah for sure i think you're totally right part of growing is also part of um sifting through you know, voices, others' voices in your life. And you're not just trying to to hear the people that are like telling you you're a genius and you're amazing and it's incredible. No, no, no. Sometimes there's people that you love that are critical of you and you can understand why they're critical and you can understand like, okay, I need this. I need to hear this mm -hmm. or I need to have, I need to engage in this conversation because I know that I can grow from it. I know yeah. that it's going to take me to a better place. Yeah, because their intent is good. Exactly. Like they're trying to give you some feedback that can make you grow. Yeah. The other one is just like... Oh, yeah, there's plenty of people. They're that, just like opening their mouth and yeah, saying things. Yeah, that, and there's people that, that just love to put people down and, mm -hmm. and or just love to criticize. Just, you know, their entire you know point in life is to find something that's wrong with like other people's work. And and that's super annoying. But we are we as artists, as visual artists, we you know we have to be, we have to know that that's part of what we do. That is very much so part of what we do. And and we have to kind of like fight through that because alongside that, alongside the you know all the um, all the criticism that we didn't ask for, all the all the you know all the stuff, all the reviews that that we didn't really ask for. Um, all the suggestions that we don't really need or asked for, um, alongside all of that, that's kind of painful to carry. You know, there's also this thing that has has nothing to do with all those other people. That has to do entirely with yourself, and and that's I think what we have to protect and what we have to defend. 
that's that's where we have to say i am dying on this hill like this hill may not mean anything to you but this is where i decided to plant my flag mm. now probably the, the whole point of growing i think as an artist is knowing when you should defend like what you're doing yeah it's like choosing your battles exactly that applies to everything everything in life yeah because yeah. sometimes there's paintings that we we should know better like we have to know that yeah it wasn't it was tough today it was tough and if people tell you oh you had a hard time today like don't like don't don't get i know we have egos but that shouldn't harm your ego we, we should be like yeah it was hard and that's it let it go and that's it you know if people notice that it was tough and you acknowledge it was tough end of the conversation that's mm -hmm. you know that's it every like that dies right there but when somebody will attack or will you know or won't get or will will be dismissive of something that's really that you know in all this searching it has become super important for you like fight the hell for that like mm -hmm. fight fight as much as you can for that if you notice that it's something important like that's not a moment to be shy that's not the moment to be quiet to like you know uh, just look for a, a tree and just like you know stand behind it no 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 that's the moment where we're like regardless of of the type of person that we are we're like hell no like nobody's taking this away from me yeah and i think that when you say fight it's not like oh you're not fight the other yeah, one don't punch people no and, and or don't like curse someone no, because no, of that. No, no. don't get use, angry at no, them no 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 use your just words just like no. yeah and sometimes like stand, I think stand that, your ground yeah but i think that sometimes at least in my opinion when you choose your battles, sometimes it means you're not gonna answer to that because you're not engaging in that fight because you really know where you stand and you know that it wouldn't do anything to the other person because they just want to, like, they have their point and they're not gonna change uh, their mind. And if they're talking about something that's your work, yeah, you shouldn't, like, wa waste your energy but fighting and trying to change all the time what right. they think i think that sometimes you should and sometimes it's also cool for you to be like okay i know i'm always going to receive this type of en like this type of energy or uh feedback about my work but i really know where i stand and i'm just gonna let it pass because i don't think that you should always fight no but like i'll give you an example okay. which is not and this is not a confrontation of any kind uh, but it's something that i think that you have to fight for. So let, imagine that you're a part of a gallery and, uh, you know, you've been successful with some paintings, but, you know, uh, uh, some people that have bought your paintings have talked to the gallery owner, to the curator, and said, you know what? If they were doing, like, still lifes, like, that would be amazing. They would sell this, like, they would sell it, everything, everything. So why don't you suggest to them that maybe it's cool if they try to do some flower paintings. Flower paintings are going to sell, like for sure. And maybe you're caught up in this thing where, you know, you're doing these these really weird paintings and you want to keep going because it's like you're in a very important part of your um, uh, of your development. And then you get a call and it's like, hey, I have an idea for you. Like the, the, the curator or the gallery director is saying, I have an idea. I think we can do incredibly well, but you have to do flower paintings. And if you do some flower paintings, like I'll take you to this big show or we'll take this these paintings to uh, to an art fair, I think we're going to do really good. I'll give you great exposure. This is going to be amazing. And you feel like, I don't care about flower paintings. Like, I don't give a, I don't give a F if you're telling me that I should do flower paintings. Like, I want to do jackets right now. I'm stuck in my jacket phase. I want to do yellow jackets. Yeah, That's... in that case, you should fight for exactly. it. But I think, I think, I'm sorry. I think that, you were saying like when you don't have to answer to someone and in this case you kind of you don't no you don't i you mean don't. but then that's, that's where you should fight for it because i'm right. i'm thinking because in my scenario i was thinking more like if you do a show yeah and someone maybe another artist that goes just gives a feedback yeah Oh, yeah, they don't mean anything. So yeah. that's why I'm saying you should also choose your battles. Because oh, yeah. always, I mean, when you're in the university, you're going to show something. And there's always going to be a student that's like, no, that's terrible. No, that's whatever. And 
you should know when to fight for it and yeah. when to just let the comment pass because they're not going to affect anything in your process. I mean, if they're not part of your art life, you shouldn't fight with them. No, no, no. No. But if they are part, like, for example, in your equation, 100% like fight for it and say, no, I mean, I'm uh, glad that they find my painting appealing, but my road now is to do jackets. Yeah. So I'm going to paint jackets. If they sell, it's because I'm selling paintings of jackets, period. Not because I'm shifting my painting towards what people want me to paint. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do feel that, You know, there there can be smaller challenges or like, and, and what could be smaller arguments, insignificant arguments, or like bigger arguments mm -hmm. that can have a, a, an impact, like a bigger impact on your career. But I do think that those moments where we are confronted with negotiations of some sort, mm -hmm. we are constantly, they're constantly there. Like just people like wanting something that you did to be a little bit different or to be better or, oh, you know what would make, you know what could have made this better? And it's like, okay, tell me what could have made this better. Mm. It's like, like I said, we never ask to hear those things. So many times they're like unsolicited suggestions. <laughs> yeah. And, but, and we have to be okay with that. I guess we have to say, okay, this comes with the territory. This is what we do. Fine. But, you know, the, the, It could be those, I would say, minor situations where we have to like say, okay, thank you. But no, the painting is what it is. Like, I'm not going to change it. Thank you. Um, or it could be things that really can shape your career hmm. that can really say like, hey, um, you know, that's not like, for example, I'll give you an example that I know, you know, from another artist, but, and, and they've talked publicly about this. So I don't feel like I'm saying anything weird. But Alberto Mielgo, mm -hmm. who's a genius, he was the art director for um, Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. for Into the Spider-Verse. And, you know, the, the whole look of Spider-Verse is 100% Alberto Mielgo. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is. Like, if you see his shorts afterwards, you can tell that all the DNA of Yeah, like his Into hand the was there. Yeah. That was impressive. It's like, it's like him. It's entirely him. And all the designs, like... The, go the Green Goblin being the, this enormous thing at the beginning in the open sequence of that movie, that was all like that was all him. So the reimagining of all this universe was was like entirely him. But he wanted he did all of that because he said we can make this movie darker and we can make like a really really cool movie that's a little bit darker. But the thing is, I guess Sony and Marvel stepped in and it's like no 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 no, like this is a Spider Man movie, so. No, you're not going to make a dark Spider-Man movie. Um, you, you know, tone it back or like, you know, try to find a way to make it more popular. And he was like, I don't think I can do that. Hmm. Goodbye. And yeah. he left. He left or he was fired. I don't know. Hmm. But he left. And I think that that's so cool. Yeah. You know, there's this Oscar winning art director that is you know, could be in an enormous project that could make him, you know, a ton of money and become super popular, more popular than he probably was or he probably is right now. And he was like, no, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, like, that's I, not what I want to do. Yeah, that's amazing because I think that talks about how you should stand, uh, like you should draw the line when the things, where when the comments or the things that people are saying are trying to change what you are. Right. Like, you know who you are, you know where you want to go, you know what you want to do. If there's a fight trying to be like, trying to get against what you're doing, yeah. just fight that fight with everything you have. Like, yeah. defend what you are as an artist and what you want as an artist. And I think that's the point. If it threatens something that matters to exactly. you. Exactly. That matters. And that's, you know, to go back to the beginning, that's what we're going for. I think that, When we say style, like style can be anything. Style can be like, oh, look, they're painting something longer. Oh my God, anyone can paint something longer. Like that's not the point. Um, style has nothing to do with any of those like tiny little superficial things, but it has very much so to do with how you depict the things that matter to you, hmm. that really, exactly. really matter. And I think you're only going to spot that feeling of like fighting when things really matter. Mm -hmm. So... You better start, you know, 
now, like now is it because painting things that matter, doing things that matter to us has nothing to do with how good or bad you are with drawing or painting, you know, how little you know of, of art history. Doesn't matter if you're educated or not. It doesn't matter. Like the things that are close to us that we, we want to defend, they have nothing to do with our ability. Mm. It's not as if like, oh, I'm super clumsy right now, but when I get better, things will matter. No, what? What? No, mm. things can matter now. You know, you could be, you know, you could fight through something and do like a little glob of a messy, you know, crap. And, but it still holds like, but you still realize like, no, what, what I'm trying to say with this is something super important. Defend it, defend it, even if your ability is not there to, to, um, to fight that fight for you or to fight alongside you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So I guess, yeah, all of that. I was, I think I was being like incredibly overdramatic, but, but I do think that if, you know, if what we're doing doesn't move us on that level, then what's the point? Hmm. Then what's the point? I'm not saying that people can, that, oh, if you're not a great painter, then what's the point? I'm not saying, oh, if you don't know how to draw, then what's the point? Or, oh, I, oh if you don't exhibit in these galleries, then what's the point? Yeah. Or if you don't, you know, if you're not working on these um, animated shows or movies or shorts, then what's the point? Yeah, no, I'm it, not saying anything like that. And it also doesn't mean that you're going to be like at your 100% with every painting you do. No, no. It's, not, it's just like defending what you want to do. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, maybe this painting isn't uh, like what I want to not do. Not quite there yet. Yeah. yeah, but I'm fighting for what I want to paint. Like I'm, like I'm in the path. Right. I'm, I'm in the path I want to be in. Imagine you start like, over here and the thing that eventually is going to feel like it makes you whole is right here. And you start this path and in here, somebody challenges you and says, what the hell are you doing, dude? Like, wh what is going yeah, on? Yeah, like, like that's go not over gonna, there. That's not going to work. Like, come on, you know, you got to be over here. It's like, you're never, if you're not strong there, you'll never be able to walk this path. Like mm -hmm. never, you're going to be walking way over there. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter. Like... If somebody says, well, the painting is not showing it, showing it yet, it's like, oh, of course not, Sherlock. Like, <laughs> fucking, of course, I don't have the ability to do that yet, <laughs> but I can, I know I can eventually do it. I know, I know, like, I believe that eventually, <laughs> you know, trusting that this is the right path and working hard to get my ability to where I want it to be, when that comes together, you're going to start to see it. But I got to start somewhere. And if I start somewhere, I don't need people telling me like, that's not the road. It's like, dude, it's hard enough to like find that damn road that you don't want people when you're in it, you know, like when you're right in it, you're you've taken two steps and people telling you, I don't think this is going to be for you. I don't really see it. I don't really see it. It's like, come on. So, yeah. So today we were, um, Sam, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that today. No, why sorry? <laughs> I don't no, know. no, no. I you don't know. I get be... super defensive. No, I get super I passionate think... about like. Uh, but I don't like think some you... of these things. Like you or no one has to be sorry for being passionate. I mean, it's not like you're attacking someone. No, no, no. In that case, no. I would be like chill I and mean, maybe respect. Maybe Callum. Maybe but... <laughs> maybe comments that Callum made. <laughs> but I'm kidding, by the way. But no, you shouldn't be like asking for forgiveness if you're just being passionate about something you yes. believe in yes so not okay. sorry and not thank sorry, you everyone not ever. nah thank you everyone for yes. being here and we'll see you tomorrow yes uh, i think that's it yeah i think so uh so see you everyone <laughs>